People yeah, sleeping like, on Sakura milf. I'm just saying, and if she's no woo, one's hey, sleeping on look, Sakura. Ain't, ain't, yeah, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody sleeping with Sakura. Either. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> she let she let bro hit one time and then he bounced. <laughs> yo, hey, yo. That's fucked up. <laughs> It's kind of true, truth. but fucked up. It's the truth. <laughs> it is true. Bro, bro, you got me. You, you knocked me up. I'm going to go get milk. Bye. <laughs>and welcome to episode number 46 of anime club after dark's wtf series a chance for us to get together once a month and talk about things outside of the anime sphere and to answer your questions from discord i'm your host alex buddy you can call me senpai and tonight i have our czar of source material john what's up hey and we have our anime recommender chinoda Hello there. I, I, that should say terrible anime recommender because you 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 do not lead with the stuff that would get people to watch anime. But did he not recommend good anime to us last season? He did. Actually, the last two, seasons, two seasons in a row, yeah. he has recommended some good anime to <laughs> us. That is absolutely completely true. ignoring the other t seasons as well. I see. Okay. The other sure. seasons you were sure. garbage. What are you talking sure, buddy. about? Okay, buddy. Sure this, the, sure. this is the dude that like seriously came to me and said, "Hey, you should really watch the Seventh Prince. It's good." <laughs> bro, it bro, is though. It's not. It's not just to show the bait. It's I told not. you. I warned you guys. I <laughs> what he should have said. Told you it wasn't that's just what I was there for. <laughs> what he should have said that. is so much you more. would like it if you watch it while turning your brain off. Because that's what? true. No. Hold on. No, I heavily disagree with I, that. I think no. it's much better than that. No, it's so not. It's I think not it's um, I think it's funny that so many people online are having an issue with the Seventh Prince because just because it's a boy instead of a girl, like that's the main. Like I'm looking at the complaints and it's like mm -hmm. I can't believe they do this this show debate stuff. And I'm like, okay. And then on other things, they just like they're praising lowly bait, and I'm just like. <laughs> Double standard much? Man, like what? the hypocrisy. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't that doesn't quite compute, John. <laughs> doesn't quite compute. I, the issue they have isn't with the whole uh gross lowly bait or show debate. The issue they have is that it's a boy instead of a girl. Yeah. <laughs> there was a dude who was like, no, episode one, just saying, I know that's gonna be a girl. There's no way that the this copium, is a boy. The fucking the There's copium. so much copium. <laughs> so Evan's much. Like, I'm copium. sorry to spoil this for you, bud, but it's a dude. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, I do want to point out something, John. You mentioned something in our spoiler channel on our Discord server about Mishoku Tensei. I knew even when I said that. Oh my god, you gross. <laughs> I knew. I didn't oh. care, but I, I knew and oh. I didn't give a shit. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. Um... <sighs> Alright, yeah, before we get into um, the questions from our Discord server, which, um, if you are interested in a uh, asking us questions that we answer here on the WTFs, look down below where you can find a link to uh, join us on our Discord server, as long as you're 18+. plus. <clears throat> But I also do want to re uh, remind you, uh, while you're watching this, do uh, like the uh, video down below. It really does help us. And also subscribe if you want to see more. Um, but let's I actually, actually get in What? I actually want to say, there was someone uh, who joined like a day or two ago, and I just looked at their profile uh, real quick just because I was on Discord and like... On their profile, they were like, yeah, I'm 15. And, like, a couple minutes oh, later, they yeah. left. And I was like, okay, thank you for actually reading and leaving. I Yeah, I don't know what that was, whether they, they read the rules and just left. But I was about to say before they left, like, guys, abandon this, abandon this account. I don't care what you say. <laughs> no, I mean, they took care of themselves. So I'm, I'm just like, cool, Listen. thank you very much. You actually read the rules. Thank you for watching. <laughs> yes. Hey, listen, I, we can't stop people who are underage from watching our podcast, but we can stop you from joining our Discord server. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so into uh, the questions for this month's WTF. First one comes from Classy, who is in the chat right now. Um you actually all of the questions I'm going to ask on these in these uh, series of questions come from two people on our server, either Classy or New Vegas. Um, y'all have a lot of fucking questions. We appreciate all, it, but wow. Uh, y'all are like the OGs of, of like our server, so 
thank you uh, for staying around and, and interacting with us. We love it. Um, but yeah, the first one comes from Classy. Uh, it says, you wake up one day and see a screen pop up, and guess what? It's a system. However, you can only choose one of the following four options. Which one will you choose? Sword system, gun system, magic system, or power system? I'm assuming this is like in a similar vein of solo leveling. Um. Um. I think it's just system period. You don't have to constrain it to one specific thing. Well, like, so all the systems are pretty cool, right? Like a sword system where I could like be a magical freaking I just instant sword god. That that'd be really mm -hmm. cool, right? All of the systems in all the systems are cool in their own right. Uh, if I wanted, I feel like magic would probably be the one I want the most, just because like magic doesn't fucking exist. Like that's crazy, mm -hmm. right? I've seen crazy people like uh with gun skills and sword skills. But magic is just like the one thing. It's like I can't cast a fucking like it's a fireball, fireball, magic missile, magic missile, <laughs> thunder, thunder, <laughs> that'd be cool. But um, I think a gun system would be cool too, just because like I like guns, I, li I like mm -hmm. pew pews. Um, and I'm assuming that if I had a gun system, I can make any type of gun I want and have unlimited ammo, so I can just imagine the fun I'd have. <laughs> I'd go with gun system, yeah. That would be my choice. But that's like I grounded in reality. See, it's like realistically, like that wouldn't probably be the best one because one, if you had a magic system, I feel like people would like come after you. Like this guy has some weird magic system. The government would come assassinate you. But if you had a gun system, it's kind of just like, well, as long as the ATF doesn't find out that you're sh <laughs> shooting a bunch of things you're not supposed to be shooting, then I guess it'll be fine. <laughs> I don't yeah. care. I want magic. I want to use it and abuse it as much as possible. Like, give me magic, baby. Give me. And this is exactly why Chinoda should never be given an ounce of power over anybody. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Horrible times. He will He will instantly abuse it. The absolute despotism. <laughs> Chinoda for president, never. <laughs> <clears throat> I can't right. technically... Actually, yeah, you were born outside the U.S., so I don't think you can run for president. Nope, I can't. That's one of the rules. Exactly. Unlimited power! Mm. This is exactly why. Uh, <laughs> Next question. Next question uh, comes from New Vegas Savior. What are your favorite creepy pastas? Mmm... I have I have a go to for this for this answer. It's it may be a, a boring one or a kind of a plain one by today's standards, but I remember being really freaked out about it in the day back in the day, <clears throat> and that's the Russian sleep experiment. Oh yeah, I remember reading that. So that one was a pretty good one for me. I think that I have a lot of favorite creepy pastas. A lot of them surround uh, video games, uh, specifically like the the Lavender Town experiment or whatever it was. Was that hacked ROM where it's like the dead spirits of children inhabit this actual game? I I just yeah. think that was cool. There's there's a lot of um, good like hacked slash cursed ROM creepy yeah, like, out there. Yeah, uh, Ben Drowned is like one of my favorite ones as well. Mm -hmm. Like just watching I love the YouTube series, one. but I probably one that I would say is my all time favorite though is uh, Hero Brian because I I had just started reading like the Hero Brian thing from Minecraft. Mm. And then I went to go play Minecraft, and I didn't know that they the in the latest update they actually added like mine shafts into the game that you can find. So <laughs> I'm digging around, and then like you know, right after learning about Hero Brian, and then I uncover a, an underground mine shaft where it's like this is the exact same story about Hero Brian. And I'm like, yo, no, hell, ain't no way, dude, ain't no way. <laughs> so I like Alt F four. I was like, oh no, 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 no. Not today, Satan. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Uh, I think yeah. mine would probably have to be the Lavender Town Syndrome creepypasta because I first ran into this when I was super uh, young and like was just getting into Pokemon and like I was playing the original Pokemon Red during this time and I ran into this creepypasta I'm like what the fuck <laughs> I, I didn't remember, realize um... what creepypastas were back then so I was just like what the fuck <laughs> I remember that there was another one when I was younger that I read. It's like a, it was, I think it was Korean where it's like, you're reading this text entry about like this, about a woman who kills herself. And then when you get to the end of it, it jump scares you by having the woman like actually appear through an image. Cause it's oh, a shit. GIF. And it's just like, <laughs> that was pretty good too. I was like, that's very interactive. Yeah. Um, 
Also, in like the same vein of creepy pastas, like something I've gotten into over the last couple of years is like all the analog horror stuff on YouTube, and that's like just evolved form of creepy pastas. Oh, oh, jo oh, oh! Is the cat up? Is the cat is the cat causing mayhem? I bet the cat's causing mayhem. He said she was asleep, so <laughs> I don't know. The cat's called. I don't know. It's always the cat. It always seems to be the cat nowadays. <laughs> and he's back. He's back. John, I think I that. had the exact same shirt. Oh, the the Estes Flask Ale? Yeah, I think I do have it. Somewhere over there. Yeah, I got it at um I'm pretty sure I got it at PAX actually back in like twenty seventeen. Yeah. No, that vendor uh goes around Damn. the whole country. <clears throat> yeah. Damn, before the COVID times. Before the coof. The <laughs> good the times. Coof. All right, uh, so the next question we have comes from Classy. Uh, what are some movies, shows, etc. that have not aged well, in your opinion? I Ooh. I have to do research because I, I can't think of anything old that I actually really loved. I've got one that's old and that hasn't aged well, but a lot of people still love. The movie Grease. That movie oh, has not yeah. aged well at no, all. No, no, the whole, like, because... I remember seeing it on, I think it was on Family Guy or, or some other Seth MacFarlane show where they they do the scene about, like, um, insinuating that he actually uh, sexually assaulted her instead. Because it's mm. kind of like, well, he kind of, because during the song, it's like, well, he kind of forced her, right? And it's just like, oh, it's kind of, it's kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, but also, the... like, this is back in the day when, you know, they didn't think women had rights and women were still property. So, <laughs> like, eh, eh. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, Greece, Greece definitely aged like milk. You are right. You are 100% right. Also, the fact that all the people in Greece are supposed to be high schoolers and they look like adults. <laughs> yeah, well, I think all of them were played by adults. I'm trying to think of... Um... That's something that you see a lot of in Hollywood, especially back then, where like you'd have 30-year-old teenagers. Oh, there's that freaking show that... It was like a Disney show, I believe, a Disney movie, where it's like... Beauty and the Beast. No. Um, because that hasn't aged well. Either. No, no, no. It's a the what? Beauty and Beast is fine. The original it's Beauty and Beast, it's fine. Okay. Listen, Belle fell in love with the Beast. It it wasn't Stockholm Syndrome. You're crazy. Okay. Okay, I'll be gaslit. <laughs> I'm saying he didn't force himself on her like Gaston did. Okay. Uh, actually, if there is anything that's super problematic about it, it's Gaston. Yes, but you know he when he was a boy he would eat twelve ten or was it two dozen eggs? Yeah, whatever. I don't like the songs were fire in Beauty and the Beast. Okay, I, oh, I'll, no, I'll be, um, I'm right there with you. The songs in Beauty and the Beast are top tier. It's <laughs> classy. Where... Lucy says Sword Art Online in the chat. <laughs> Euro Trip did not age well either. I would say, but now that I think about it, I think Euro Trip was just problematic just in general. <laughs> mm. It was. Um. um no, it's. Uh, I think it was a Disney live action movie. It's the one where at the end it's like a little kid and he kisses that adult woman. I don't remember what that one was called though. Mm. I have no idea. It sounds familiar, but I don't know what you're talking about. Like it sounds like something I've watched. Yeah, and it's just like, hey yo, he's like twelve, and you're like Saturday Night Fever. Is that what it was mm. called? I have no idea. Saturday Night Fever it, hasn't aged. I don't uh, know. I I, re I just remember there was some show. I'm pretty sure it was on Disney. It was a live action or not show movie where it was about a kid. And then I just remember at the very end, he gets like full on makes out with this adult woman. And I'm just like, hey, yo, at, you know, at I the mean, time when I, when I was also 10 years old, I was just like, oh, my God, he's getting he's. He's getting some lip action from a hot babe. Like, oh, my God. But it's like, you know, hey, yo, she's like 20. You're like 10. There's no problem here. I mean, I mean, if you want to if you really want to get nitpicky, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, Misato basically makes out with a 15 year old Shinji <laughs> and she's like 27. OK, but that's like kind of like not as bad as a 20 and a 10 year old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, OK, but it's still like, mm. yeah, I know. Yeah, like. Comparison wise, though, I'm just saying I reverse have... the genders and tell me it's still okay, John. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Hollywood would be fine with it. Well, <laughs> yeah, of, course they they with, of course, they Hollywood were, would be. They were fine with the movie American Beauty. I don't think I've seen that one. That's the one with Kevin Space, and it's not problematic because Kevin Space is in it. That's just one of many reasons why. <laughs> oh, but the no. dude, the dude, the dude plays a middle-aged man who falls in love with one of his daughter's friends. 
Oh. Ooh. Yeah. Did you guys see that uh, Weinstein's case got overturned in New York? I did. No, what? Yeah. I did hear about that, yeah. How did it get overturned? Uh, Apparently because... it was because he was, uh, the judge was asking the jurors questions about unrelated things. What? No, that's not or, the reason why. No, the why. witnesses, not the jurors, I mean. Yeah. What? I don't know. It's one of those it, like, legal technicality case... things. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm hearing he's is still Hollywood in jail. cover up. Hollywood, no, he's, I mean, he's still in jail. Up. He's still in jail uh, because California is still uh, upheld. He's being transferred there. Oh, um, just New York? Okay. Yeah, yeah just yeah, New York. Yeah, just in New York. Because he, 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 he was on trial in multiple states for the things he did. Oh my yeah. god! Yeah, because these crimes have, uh, occurred in multiple states. I have two shows uh, that I can say. Uh, hmm. Big Bang Theory. I never liked it in the first place. I found a couple of skits here and there funny, but like overall, I'm like this is fucking cringe. Couple of years uh, later, like I was at a friend's house and uh, they just had it on that at the as background noise. And I'm, I've watched it a little bit. I'm like, wow, this is even worse than I remember. Holy shit. I just recently rewatched Big Bang Theory for like the third time, and I still think it's fine. It's not as terrible as people make it out to be. It's not great by any means, but it's fine, dude. I think it's offensive towards nerd culture overall. I think I it's, think it's a show that in the first season, they're like, oh, if we made a show how we actually wanted to make it about like nerdy people, it would fucking suck. So they... Tip pivoted to making it just more about like ho ha ha pop, pop culture reference. Yeah. Like I saw, yeah. I, I I know the reason they had to pivot was because it was the show was gonna be extremely unlikable. Like sh the character of Sheldon was like freaking unbearable in the first season. So I think it was a good pivot for the TV series to be a, a like to be able to be airing on TV and have kind of a fan base. Mm -hmm. But yeah, by That's no true. means is it like amazing comedy or anything like that. I just thought it it really didn't age well uh, when I saw an episode. I was just like, man, this is just really that bad. No, um, it's just like run in the mill sitcom. Like it's no, nothing. It is like I, mean, <laughs> I was gonna say Friends or not Friends. Um, that '70s show aged very poorly, but that's because of like, uh, was it Danny Ma Masterson? Ma Matterson? What the guy? The guy who played Hyde. <laughs> I think it Masterson. I Matterson. I don't. I don't remember his last name. Because he's he caught the cases for like was it essaying a bunch of girls or something? Oh uh, yes, yikes. a bunch of very young girls. Oh yeah. big yikes! And then people like Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher like wrote letters on his behalf, which I was like, dude, what the hell's wrong? With you? Like, oh, I remember Kutcher. this happening. That's yeah. What that was I'm just about. like, I'm like, I don't know if they personally wrote it or they had their publicists do it. I have zero idea. Yeah, but like, I was just like, Ashton Kutcher, weren't you like the guy who? stopped being an actor and then just went and saved a bunch of women from being trafficked isn't that your whole like shtick nowadays yeah like i actually like, respect him for doing that because like yeah yeah that's actually but it's like really how, how are you gonna like talk about like how, how are you gonna go and support these type of charities to help stop trafficking women and then like when your buddy from your acting days back when you first started acting gets caught up in these cases about essaying you know women now did you write a letter on her behalf or on their on his behalf like what the hell Aren't you the one who's like believe the victims? Like, I know, whatever. whatever. Was it? Yeah. Was it? I, I don't remember if it was Ashton Kutcher, but it was someone like that was famous around that same time, who um, made the they. There's like footage of them making the joke back then about Miley Cyrus about like we're all waiting for her to turn eighteen. It's like yikes. <laughs> I forget I mean, if that, that was Ashton was Kutcher creepy. that said that or not, but it's I. But it was someone he, like his age and was popular around the same time as like that '70s show. See, I I, br I brought this up before. I'm not sure if I brought it up on the podcast, but I've I've talked about it to my wife at least. I'm like, you know, Hollywood, uh, entertainment industry, and just like Western it stuff in general. Like they've mm -hmm. always done that. Like remember when Britney wasn't 18 yet? Everyone like the countdown until Britney turns 18. Britney Spears. That shit was so creepy. Yeah. And they did the exact same thing to Miley Cyrus. They did the exact same thing to Billie Eilish. They. I'm pretty sure I I don't keep up with Twitter, so I have no idea how the creepers live. But I'm pretty sure Millie Bobby Brown, who plays Eleven in um, Stranger Things, I'm pretty sure they, they there's probably a countdown for her too. Who knows? I don't know. 
I'm I'm convinced that Billie Eilish is not a real person. Like she's just a, like a collective figment of our imaginations. <laughs> Billie Eilish has a weird relationship with her brother, who is also her manager and producer or something. Yeah, it's it's ooh, ooh. like I know I'm <laughs> I I know I'm the one that you think like hmm, hmm, sweet no. home Alabama <laughs> roll tide I'm roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is there is there a basis behind what you guys are saying? Like, no, or is no, it just it's conjecture? just people make it's just conjecture, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, okay. I have heard I mean, the rumor though. The only thing I know rumors about Billie come Eilish, around everywhere. Who yeah, cares? It, I, I only know about that. Like, she has this weird relationship with her brother. Something about they shared, they still share a bed or something. I don't know. It was weird. I don't know. I don't don't ask me, man. Don't ask me about celebrity gossip. <laughs> I heard from a dude who heard from a dude who read it on a fucking article somewhere. So it's probably <laughs> bullshit, you know? I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll wow. believe it when I see it on TMZ because they're weirdly accurate about shit like that. But, um, yeah, the only, the only other thing I know about is, like, Billie Eilish has that weird song that has that weird beat. It's like, I'm a bad guy. And it's like, doot, 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 doot. <laughs> That's the only thing I know about Billie Eilish. Oh yeah, that one overplayed song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even. I don't even. I think it's called "Bad Guy" or something because I just know she just like does a deep voice. Like I'm a bad guy. Then it makes that weird beat, and I'm just like, that's a weird beat. I kind of like it. It's like that. <laughs> it's like that Mr. Krabs like singing the robot song when he hears it on the radio. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah do, 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 do. <laughs> that's what it makes me think of. <laughs> Squidward, I don't want to alarm you, but I think Mr. Krabs might be a robot. <laughs> God. Oh man! Speaking of creepy bosses, uh, Squidward's dead was uh, oh Squidward's creepy... suicide. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that. That one was pretty nuts too. So I forget what the actual episode was, but there's a recent or recent-ish episode of SpongeBob, like from the last few seasons. Which yeah, they make a shows... reference to uh, Squidward's they make a suicide, reference to yeah. Squidward's what suicide, but it was only it was only in the original airing of it. It has since been edited out. <laughs> No way, what? Yeah. In the DVD release they edited it out and they will never broadcast that original Cowards. version again. Cowards. I forget Listen, what the Nickelodeon's actual episode... trying to avoid catching more cases, all right? Yeah, that's <laughs> and, true. Uh, and apparently there's also a reference in that same episode to a SpongeBob fanfic. No way. <laughs> what? Yeah. What the fuck? I don't know, man. The, the, listen, Steven Hillenberg is rolling in his fucking grave. I know that shit. Um, I remember anyway, that anyways. um there was a did you guys there was a SpongeBob week where they the so in the office of the storyboard people they used to do um they'd write like adult centered panels storyboard panels of mm -hmm. SpongeBob and they'd put it on a sticky note and put it behind the door so that way if anyone walked into the room they'd never see it because it's behind the door so only mm -hmm. the writers would know and I remember I watched the video where they um some guy apparently like through connections of his um got a photocopy of those things it's like in a booklet because it was for all the people part of the animation team like basically people who were part of it in storyboard team animation team whatever they all got like this book of photocopies of like all the adult panel stuff and mm -hmm. then it somehow made it online someone someone knew someone and decided i'm gonna leak this and i remember seeing it and i'm just like and people were like go i say people twitter Twitter was going nuts over this. Like, oh my the god. Twitter blah, 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 blah. And I just was like, okay, how how bad are these panels? Like, how how terrible is it? And I, I'm reading it, and I'm looking at the, the post-its, and I'm just like, they're just people, who, like, regular job people just making jokes. Like, funny yeah. fucking jokes. Yeah. Like, it's it's naughty jokes. It's terrible. You shouldn't be making, like, you want to uh, raise Spongebob? Suck me cock, boy. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like jokes like that, right? It's, it's, so like, it's like the uh, the yeah. fan game. It's like the fan game. Mister Krabs overdoses on ketamine. Oh yeah, Mister Krabs overdoses on ketamine and dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Which, does Charlie still have the world record on that? <laughs> Maybe I don't know the world record speed run. Oh my god! Yeah, but it's just like I don't. People were just overreacting to it. Like I get it. You know, SpongeBob is a kid show, but. There's I mean, so much. It, if you want these... a good example, John, of this exact same thing still happening, literally like two days ago when the Stellar Blade demo came out, 
uh, apparently all these game journalism outfits had this ready to go. Like within an hour after the thing launched, they had the thing up saying that uh, they found a uh, graffiti that says hard R in it. I'm like, yeah, I did see on. that. And they changed it. It was yeah. just like, that was just an unfortunate coincidence because it's yeah. like how tiling packs work and stuff. So they, they fixed it. I remember seeing that, but it's like, it was the graffiti hard. And then it's, uh, it's like Roxanne. Shop. Yeah. Our shop. I, I did see yeah. that. But also, like, a bunch of people were, um, I don't, so I don't understand the hate behind the game of, uh, whatever Blade. Stellar, Stellar Blade. Blade. It's just, like, she's over-hyper-sexualized. I'm like, so was 2B. Like, what? Yeah. Is, and that's, like. Nier Atomics is a great fucking game. Well, it's a great story, and it just ha also uh, just coincidentally has hot waifu. I don't yeah. understand and great game why play. Stellar Blade is, like, what's. I don't understand the issue with the game, other than like, does it if it plays fine and has a good story, who cares? Like, you know, it's a dime a dozen, you know, of these waifu games, right? Mm -hmm. Freaking the Atelier series is a fucking waifu similarity game, right? Genshin Impact, Genshin Impact, Fate, the Fate series is a waifu simulator, Husbando simulator. Like, why specifically have a problem with Stellar Blade when quite literally there are so many other things out there that have continued to exist and have huge fan bases. Mm -hmm. I don't understand the issue. It seems I, like I, a non-issue, a whole nothing burger. It, it is. I, I 100% think it is. Like if you have a problem as, as someone who wants to play the game with the way the character is Lady designed. Demetrescu. Yes. I do remember the tall lady from Resident Evil classy. Yes, <laughs> and how people went. Lady. Let me say, the people were very normal about her when that game released. <laughs> um, mommy, sorry, very, mommy, very sorry. <laughs> but no, like if if you have a, a issue personally with how like a character is designed in a game, don't play it. Just don't yeah. play it. I don't know. I think a lot of it is just um, game journo minority just screeching for no reason. Well, it's like I I understand so. One thing is, like, I don't think that uh, the the makeup industry, for example, the beauty industry in general, mm. I think that there are a lot of pushes for things that a lot of people don't need in makeup <clears throat> and that there's mm. a lot of heavy-handed advertising in everything, you know, normalizing the fact that, you know, the blemishes aren't real. You know, cellulite is not real, by the way. Like, if anyone thinks cellulite is gross, cellulite is not a real freaking skin condition. It's not something that you should be ashamed of. It's normal. It's a normal part of your body. So is halitosis. <laughs> but it's like because of the beauty industry people think oh because i have these blemishes or i have this i have that it's, it's i'm hideous you know just like the whole apothecary diaries with the whole freckle thing i was just like yeah i don't think freckles look ugly i don't understand why historically I that's I, I, maybe historically that's accurate that they think freckles are ugly maybe you know because beauty does the standard of beauty does change over time you know we there's yeah. plenty of videos about that but my point is people should be able to be comfortable in their own skin and if you want to beautify yourself and have, like, um, makeup on and you want to do all that, that's fine. I don't care. Right? You do you. You do whatever makes you feel good about yourself. That's fine. But I think the whole uh, – so I do agree in that aspect of yeah. we should stop the standardization of beauty. Like, we all need to look like Hollywood movie stars with, you know, there's no such thing as pimples. There's no such thing as freckles, moles, nothing. We all have yeah. perfect straight white teeth. That's something that's also super crazy about, like, America in general. Everyone is obs obsessed with having perfect white teeth. Perfect straight white teeth. <laughs> um, I know th my favorite thing it's about weird. the Stellar Blade, like, controversy, in air quotes, um, was that, like, one of the big criticisms when that, that character design was first announced or released, uh, like, the game journals were like, that's not how real women look. Blah, it's blah, not blah, even blah, the blah. game journals. It was specifically IGN France uh, that yeah. posted that article. And even my, IGN was like, uh, not with us, buddy. My my favorite thing about that, though, was the studio that made the game. I think it was, like, the very next day released on Twitter, like, a behind-the-scenes video <laughs> like, of them body a scanning person. a real person. And that's <laughs> like, actually the a... model they use for the main character. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real woman. These, this is what real women can look like. Now, this is a model, and models tend to be, you know, above average attractive. But yes, this is in fact a real person that's super fucking pretty. Boo fucking yeah. who? Go back home to your fat chicks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? I mean, to be fair, this is France we're talking about. So, does anyone really care? No. no. 
No. No. Everyone loved it because it gave uh, them an outlet. Mm. Yeah, it's just... Look, dude, if if this is the worst thing that's happening in your life right now, I've got to say, you're living a pretty damn good life. You're, you're like, living pretty well. <laughs> Hell yeah, first <laughs> world. This, yeah, like, this is <laughs> such a first world problem, dude. Like, what the heck? France does hate everything, including themselves. You are absolutely right about that. Absolutely, <laughs> yep. All right, moving on to our next question. Um, as from New Vegas. Oh, wait, Stadium. no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I had another what? answer that I forgot to say. Oh, my uh, God, house. Oh. House, I no. think it's... Listen. I think it aged poorly because it's entirely repetitive. And over, past the years, um, once I saw it again, I was like, oh, I... wow, it's literally just the same formula. It's an episodic show. It's agree. supposed to be repetitive. Well, no, I can kind of agree because it gets lost in its own sauce. And then it really ends really fucking weirdly. Like mm. with the whole house kind of dying thing and Mary and Cuddy. Like the whole it, – it just – it lost itself in the end. It originally started yeah. as like a, a competitor to like – um was it Grey's Anatomy, right? Here's a yeah. medical yeah. document. Like let's let's get it on the Grey's Anatomy train, guys. Here's let's our quirky a, doctor. Yeah, here's our quirky doctor. And I've never seen Grey's Anatomy, so don't <laughs> – don't hate me for – I've never I seen know. House. I've only seen a couple episodes. I've watched House uh one time in its entirety. I actually binged all of it just because I was like – I remember watching it on TV, and I, I, I kind of liked it. You know, like that's a sick-ass uh, – dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, dun-dun-dun-dun-dun, <laughs> like the fucking opening sequence. Like that – Yeah. Yeah. In my brain now. I can hear it forever. I know what the opening is. But – um yeah it's always the same shtick of like here is the problem like oh i am a jackass doctor but i'm amazing at my job easy diagnosis oh turns out doctor there are other issues hmm it must be something else quickly we must do some extreme testing <laughs> extreme and weird testing <laughs> Can I and just say, though, with that with house, if out. as many people came in with those rare conditions as they do in that clinic, that'd be a fucking laboratory clinic. What are you talking about? It really about? would be. It really fucking would be. Yeah, uh, like, I remember I watched a clip of, like, the, um, mm. find out the person who made house did Good Doctor. I've never seen The Good Doctor. The funny, Autistic so the funny thing about show. that, I have seen, I have, I've seen bits and pieces of the good doctor, and like it is billed as like the main character is supposed to be an autistic doctor. So the other doctors have to learn how to like deal with him because he's he's not the best communicator. House is a much That's better how... representation of an actual autistic doctor. Yeah, he just seems like a brash asshole to everyone else. Mm. Who also is addicted to pills. Yes, there was that weird. To... Vicodin or something. <clears throat> yeah, he was addicted to Vicodin. Yeah. All right, should we move on now? Yes, yeah. yes. All right, next question comes from New Vegas Savior. If you could become an, an animal, what animal would you become and why? A cat, so I could sleep all day. Oh, that does sound wonderful. I like to be a bird, some type of bird. Well, a bird of prey, just He wants well, to be a government drone. Hmm. Sounds I, like if I could be a bird of prey, that'd plot. be pretty sick, you know? Like, fly wherever I want to fly to, and just, like, like, an eagle screech. <laughs> I think that'd be John, fun. I hate you because that's literally my answer as well. <laughs> See? <laughs> I want to be a bird so I can just fly all the time whenever I want. I just want to ride the thermos, man. I just think yeah. that's cool as shit. I'm like, let me fly. I, I'll just occasionally swoop down, get some prey, go back up. Like, Eagles let me chill in the sky. Eagle I'd rather be a falcon Mer than an eagle. Yeah, really. Falcons are cool. <laughs> well, because first of all, I believe the um the eagle screech that the, the eagle screech that we think is an eagle isn't actually an eagle. It's I'm pretty sure it's a falcon. Oh, yes. that, like that that stock. Uh, yeah, the stock eagle screech is not actually yeah. an eagle. An, an eagle like squawks. <laughs> an eagle doesn't <laughs> screech. <laughs> an eagle is closer to a chicken than it is to a, to what we think is an eagle. But thanks to propaganda, we think eagles are like all oh, this tough, big, tough animal. It's like nope. They are big. Eagles, I will say they are. Eagles, definitely bald big. eagles. Bald eagles are big. Bald eagles are big, but I, I believe a lot of eagles are um they're carrion eaters, so they eat dead meat. They don't actually eat um they, like, like vultures do. Yeah, they're they're kind of closer to vultures. Versus, like, falcons, which is, like, we kill them. Literally snipe the head off of a chicken to eat it. <laughs> falcons are cool, man. We wanted a lion, but it was taken, so we got an eagle. You know, the funny thing about the bald eagle being, like, the symbol, like, the animal symbol of America is that, uh, was it Ben Franklin wanted it to be a turkey. 
<laughs> he, <laughs> he legit he legit wanted the national animal of America to be a turkey. Why? I fucking love why Penny. not? Why I mean, not? Turkey's dude. delicious, man. Turkeys are so, turkeys are so dumb. They literally will they eat drown. Their own shit. No, like so. My cousin was telling me about. I believe it was his uncle. Um, so I guess he would technically be my uncle. But they had to, they were raising turkeys, and the turkeys drowned themselves in their own drinking water. Nice. <laughs> what? Because they're How so the damn fuck? stupid. I don't know. I thought chickens were stupid. Holy shit! That's even all, worse. All the all dumber. the like all the fowl birds are really dumb. The chickens. I think hens... chickens are pretty smart. I don't know, man. No, chickens are really dumb. I don't know. I, I think some chickens are pretty smart. I can tell you one thing I found out one day. Chickens love McDonald's chicken nuggets. What? I Listen, I was with someone, and they just fed it a chicken that happened to be there, a chicken nugget, and boy, yeah, it gobbled eat whatever. that thing they, they don't actually care. They eat eggs all the time. Oh, I know. Yeah, they, to recycle the nutrients. Like If you ever go and raise chickens... Uh, you'll learn a lot about chickens, and it's like they're actually, actually pretty cool. They're pretty cool. I, I did help uh, with some chickens because previous place I was at, uh, we had three chickens. Um, we actually the eggs we got from them, we uh, crushed it up and uh, put it over their uh, pellets so that they eat it because they need that calcium uh, yeah. to produce more eggs. Yeah. 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 All right, uh, next question comes from Classy again. Uh, you have 30 days to fix a current manga run. You can't start over at Chapter 1. What current manga story would you fix or change? All right, it'd be Berserk, and it'd be <sighs> just finish it. <laughs> Bro, no, no. I would use the power to revive Mira Sensei and have him finish Berserk in the last 30 chapters. <laughs> so, I'm not a writer. I'm just going to say that up front. But Comey Can't Communicate is very much drifting at the moment. Drifting? And it's always been bad. Cope no, I fuck you. It hasn't Cope always been seethe, bad. Brother. It has not always been it's bad. It's always fuck been off. trash. Go hang yourself. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> can't say um, that. You got to say, go nope rope yourself. <laughs> oh, is that is that what the kids call it nowadays? Uh, uh, gotta, go gotta, gotta go, get him go unalive cool yourself. Crown. Take oh, no, this charged pistol yeah, and kiss things. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, so no, the manga has always been like a little bit here and there, but touching moments. But like the last like fifty chapters or whatever, it's been it's very much been other side characters and like whatever things happening it's just been a lot of nonsense with nothing moving forward and i'm just like yeah i think it's on. funny you that, need to um, take a break if you need to basically and just... the the very popular like i guess the romance oh my god my cat is climbing behind me. oh she's awake yeah she's going crazy right now <laughs> she was climbing the thing behind me the, the little <laughs> thing but she no, wanted I, to be I, on camera seen a, a youtube short that talked about like so how come Komi-san can't, like, decide where it wants to go? Because quite literally, like, um, Nagatoro, you know, please mm -hmm. don't bully me, Nagatoro. It's like we had the major, like, thing happen there. Spoilers, big um, mm, Don't I, say anything. The major thing. The major thing happened that we were all waiting for happened. Uh, for um, Usabi. Uh, Usabi. Uh, Usaki-chan. Usaki. Yeah, that yeah. happened recently. That, you know, the major thing happened there. We're like, yes, let's fucking get it, bro. Freaking, um, I think it was in Hokkaido Girls. I believe that that one also had a resolution as well. Oh, really? I oh, so. there I, she, not... <laughs> she is climbing. John, bring her in. Oh, just, just bring her in. Just bring her in. <laughs> she doesn't want to be brought into camera. Yeah, she's uh. climbing. I told you. I'm uh, just waiting but... for the poster to just start going one by one. Just I mean, that's why I had down. to take down uh, Lelouch and Talking because she kind of ripped them. Do you like want crazy. to tell tell everyone how much in merch she's ruined now? So I got a cat because my wife loves cats and wanted a cat, so we got a kitten. And she John, that's destroyed. not how you say it. You say we have a daughter now. I don't have a daughter. I, this is a you cat. have a daughter. This is a fur baby. It's not an actual baby. Yes, that's but your baby, John. The point is, we got this cat, and she's destroyed approximately five hundred dollars worth of my figures, my anime collectible figures. <laughs> so that's a thing. Listen, I'm just I'm just saying 
euthanasia is an option. <laughs> yeah, I was talking Jesus. about this last night. I'm just like, you know, animals are animals. I I don't blame animals for doing anything like that. It's just like they're they're animals, dude. <laughs> like it's it sucks, sure, but you know these are inanimate objects. They can be like, actually, some things can't be replaced because I have collectibles things that are they don't make anymore. So, like, if she fucked up my um my collectible Miku poster from uh Miku Expo, I'd be very upset. <laughs> hmm. But point is, it's it's just a animal. Like it's just stuff. I I'm, I yeah. don't have that much of a, I'll fix OP uh, one piece by ending it probably in the man's rage out. See, <laughs> classy, you can't do that. You can't do that because there would be worldwide riots if that happened. No, see, you that's think that's, that's how you do it. I guarantee you, Oda has no idea how to end it either, and it's just going to be the ending's going to be eh. There was no one piece all along. <laughs> no, the friends we made we, along the way. We know what the one piece is. <laughs> The One Piece was real. He told us so. Uh huh. The One Piece is real. Okay. I, Can I'm, you take I'm this just saying. I, so I'm just high. saying. There have been a lot of mangaka that have not lived a long time recently, and Oda's getting up there in age. Bro, don't say that. Stop, stop talking, it. Alex. Stop. You put away you the have death a note. Gift that you put away the death stop. note, Alex. I wow. swear. Jesus Christ. Oh no! He's putting Oda sensei. <laughs> Not the fen note. Oh no. Yeah. Also, hi Jacob. I don't have I don't have a death note. I got a fen book. Fen book. The fen note. I just realized it's kind of like the uh the faux name brand thing that they have and stuff instead of like Facebook, it's fen book. Um uh for, but yeah, I no, have a, so hold on. I have an answer. For, well, I, I kind of have an answer for this, but I don't watch a lot of currently airing um, manga or read a current a lot of currently publishing manga. I should say, um, except for Berserk, which is technically still publishing, and uh, JoJo's, which is in part nine right now. And I like both of them, and I really don't want to change anything about them. So I really don't have an answer for this. Um, if you were going to ask me about something that I had read and wasn't currently publishing, I would say probably JoJo's Part 6, just because I didn't like how that ended. I would change the ending to something less um, a shitty. <laughs> really? You thought it was shitty ending? I don't like how Part 6 ends, no. I, I think okay, that that's if, fair. If, if the goal was to go into some kind of alternate universe, which is what happens in Part 7... Um, I think that should have been set up better in part six. Understandable. Yeah, I, I can understand that. I'm not Sorry sure if I that. fully agree with it, but I can understand that. That's fine. Welcome back, John. I had to. Uh, you didn't miss Paul too much, Jacob. You missed a couple of questions, but you can go back and watch that once this gets uploaded. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Um, yeah, I might that. I guess my answer is I don't really have an answer because I don't read a lot of um, currently publishing manga. There's not so the thing is just like uh, Chinoda said, you know, I'm I'm I don't fancy myself as a writer. I there's not a bunch of manga series that I could say like I could fix, other than like <laughs> if I could fix Bleach, I'd delete everything after Eisen. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you didn't like the Thousand Year Blood War. I did, but the the arc after Eisen arc is real fucking dumb. Oh, the uh, when he regains his powers. Yes, real dumb. I hated it. Yeah, I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of that. Um, uh, but I love the Thousand Year Blood War. I oh no, that was awesome. That that's actually awesome. But... Fucking cool. Hmm. But yeah, no, that that arc. Uh, it's not full bringer. Um... The problem is that it's um, for the currently running manga. I just there's not much that I could say like I could fix other than like because the ones that I would want to see things happen in everything has happened the ones that I care about you know mm -hmm. Uzaki and Nagatoro I don't care about Komi so <laughs> like it's fine that's her I guess uh, what I do about read, any of your isekai mangas I think they're all fine where they're at I mean I oh okay even the trashy ones yeah <laughs> I see. <laughs> It wouldn't be trash isekai if I fixed it. It has exactly, to be and, and you wouldn't watch it if it wasn't I, trash I, isekai. I'm enjoying it not just because it's isekai, but it's trash. 
Like I don't. Yo, Naruto had a terrible ending. It's called Boruto. Yeah, I'd like to fucking end <laughs> so that. So funny! Shit. I'm so funny. <laughs> Boruto bad. <laughs> everyone says that's like, you. Wow. Everyone dunks wow. on Boruto, and yet it's the number one manga on Shonen Jump. Like, <laughs> bro, bro, the the polls don't lie, man. <laughs> it's the literally out competing One Piece and like Chainsaw Man and all them other ones. Like. Come on. I feel like I feel like uh Boruto is kind of like the Bethesda game of of manga. It's like it had a rough beginning, it had a rough launch, but people came in and fixed it after the fact. Why does Naruto need the internet? I don't know because after the Great Ninja War they decided they needed cell phones. <laughs> I don't know, man. Besides, if anyone's paid Elon attention, Musk. they've been having tech for a very long time. Because Just Naruto saying. started in 1999, right? I'm pretty sure yeah. the first yeah. volume, re- like I think the first, first chapter. I think it was actually 98, but it started publishing regularly in 99. Yeah, so like, it's a Boruto takes place literally 20 years after their initial run of the manga, so they have to update it. <laughs> yeah. Like, back in the 90s, it was unheard of to have smartphones like we have today, so that it makes sense. Boruto show got great milfs. It's all you needed. It's all you needed. Listen, all it needed, weirdly, was, was Hinata. Like, God. Damn. Damn. God. It's, it's got dang. so many great milfs. Come on. God dang. <laughs> Seriously. People <laughs> yeah, sleeping dang. on Sakura milf. I'm just saying. And if she's. No woo. one's hey, sleeping on look, Sakura. Ain't, ain't, yeah, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody sleeping with Sakura. I didn't like it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> she let she let bro hit one time and then he bounced. <laughs> yo, hey, yo. That's fucked up. <laughs> it's Kinda the true, truth. but fucked up. <laughs> it's the truth. <laughs> it is true. Bro, bro, you got me you, you knocked me up. I'ma go get milk. Bye. <laughs> Can't wait until All 20 right. nine when you see how Konosuba anime ends. <laughs> bro thinks wow. we're gonna live that long. <laughs> right. <Bro. sighs> All right, uh, next, next question, question comes yeah. from a New Vegas Savior. What type of dare do you see you got? You, let me try that again. What type of dare do you see yourself as? Not a dare at all. But b- lies. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> lies. Complete um, lies. I have to look at that list. I mean, I, I've always kind of considered myself more of a coup dare, but you guys would probably disagree. No, I can see that from you. No, mm, I'll be thirty nine. You guys, however, not in twenty thirty nine. I will be forty nine years old. I think Alex is more of a Hime Dairy, to be honest. <laughs> what? He's a little princess. Not, He's a spoiled I'm brat. Not, no. <laughs> Dramatic drama queen over there. I think I am the only person on the podcast who's an only child. I think all of you have siblings. I think even Natai has a sibling. I feel like I'd be a yonder. I am not a kudere. Fuck you. See? Ha, fuck you. Actually, Alex, I see you as a yandere. I, I don't am think Alex not is a yandere. A yandere. Jesus Christ. Yeah, when you fall, you kind of fall hard, buddy. <laughs> Whoa. What <laughs> does that even mean? When you fall in love with people, you kind of fall hard. I don't want to kill them, though. It's not that we want to kill them. It's that I will kill you if you go talk to someone else. <laughs> There's a difference. A tsuadere. Um. I, I mean, think I, I'm a Dairy, Don maybe? Da- yeah. I think I would see myself as a Dondere when I am uh, in love with someone that's what I tend to be like. Okay. I can see it. Listen, I'm not up to code with all the dairies, so there's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. There is a lot. There's, there's way more. I mean, I, I learned that there's a word for what holo is in spice and wolf. It's a hyakusu dairy, literally teasing dairy, which is what Nagatoro is too. Nah, you give hugs too easily. No, to, that's right. <laughs> Noda's actually a dairy dairy. <laughs> mm. Well, n- that's not fair because I give hugs to everyone. Literally everyone. That's just a form of greeting for me. Oh, I, I found I found one that I am a Doro dairy. 
Doro Dairy. What's that one? Doro Dairy is a term for a character who acts cute and sweet on the outside as disguised to hide their true feelings and intentions of their insides, which are full of disturbed thoughts and feelings towards everyone. Oh, yeah, no, that's Alex. That is very that's much Alex. Me. <laughs> I don't think you can not like feet and not be that. And moving on. Uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> moving on from that. <laughs> What's your favorite Call of Duty game and Halo game? All right. Call of Duty, I'm talking the original Modern Warfare 2. I love mm. Modern Warfare 2. The OG Same. Modern Warfare 2 <laughs> is so good. I feel like that's going to be mostly everyone's answer just because like the campaign is freaking nuts, you know? Um and then like the the online play was super awesome too. For yeah. Halo, that one I'm pretty torn about because if I'm being completely honest, this actually leads into something I want to talk about later. But I, I'm i very biased in saying Halo 3 because mm. the campaign for, like, the advertisements and stuff were freaking nuts about that. Mm. Um, I was, I don't think I put it down here on my list, right? I wasn't going to talk about the Halo things this, this uh, episode. Yeah, I guess the, I wasn't. What, the, the show? Because please don't talk about the show. No, no, no. I was... <laughs> And uh, I was thinking, I was watching a bunch of the Halo trailers, and I was just like, God, Halo had a bunch of fucking amazing game trailers. Oh, my God. The, the original yeah. Halo 3 teaser trailer was awesome. Hot take. That's not a hot take. That's a cold take. A lot of people think Modern Warfare 2 was overrated. <laughs> nah, John, yeah. you want me big red one? I don't even know what that is. It's one of the original Call of Duty games from back, like, WW2 <laughs> days. Oh, my God. Uh, But... Yeah, I'd say probably Halo 3 is for the just like the marketing, but I think Halo 2 was like a, it's an excellent game. I love the entire like playing through Halo 2 is very memorable for me. Mm. Like Halo 1 is a classic for sure, but then it's like all of them are good in their own right, man. They have all great things like ODST except for is Halo an 5. amazing story. Oh, except Halo 4 and 5 and I, I haven't played Infinite, so I can't tell you about Infinite, but mm. yeah, ODST and um Reach are fucking phenomenal too. It's hard for me to like pick a favorite one. But... Uh, soon you're thinking of the uh, uh, I Love Bees campaign from uh, Halo 2. That was the ARG they created. Oh, yeah. I Love Bees was fucking amazing. Um, Alex? <laughs> I mean, so for for me, like I love the OG um, Modern Warfare 2. That may be my favorite Call of Duty game. A close second would probably be Black Ops 2, because I genuinely enjoyed that game a lot. Black um, Ops was a really good one, too. I got really good at playing Black Ops 2 <laughs> <laughs> online. <laughs> I was, like, um, one of the first people to gold, like to grind to gold. So. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I was addicted, bro. Oh, my God. For Halo, like, for online play, just... Getting to do the online stuff for Halo 2 back in the day, God, that was fun. Oh my God, it just like it's one of the first games that really took advantage of Xbox Live and all the stuff it could do back then. Yeah, it was so much fun. Um, in terms of narrative, though, probably Halo Reach is my favorite narrative. I've got campaign narrative. Yeah, I remember um, Reach? Yeah, I that camp that ad campaign too was great. All right, so. I kind of so, want to segue into talking about Halo. I was gonna, I wasn't gonna talk about it this episode, but now, now that we're talking about Halo, like, hey man, what a better time to talk about Halo. Well, so, let me let me answer mine first. No, 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 no. we don't care about Chinoda's opinion. His doesn't oh. matter. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, I'm kidding. Go ahead, go, go ahead, Chinoda. Oh, uh, I mean, real shit, same though, beat. But... <laughs> Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two OG. Um, it bec it was what really got me into gaming like i mean truly got me into gaming like that i mean sitting down playing for days on end dropping so many racial slurs i would have been, man, I been canceled hey, hating yo. everyone do, doing speaking some of hard r's things <laughs> Oh, uh, we were saying every type of racial slur, man. No discrimination. <laughs> well, I am times. not going to be the one that gets us canceled. I <laughs> swear to God, I'm not. I'm talking about the past. Thank you very much. <laughs> that don't matter on your line. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. It was genuinely amazing game. The campaign was fantastic. The co-op missions were 
so fun, difficult, but so fun, especially when you were doing it on uh, the hardest mode. And the multiplayer, ev the basically everything was balanced so freaking perfectly. Every gun had a situation which called for it. It wasn't a... Uh, Hey, here's a crap ton of uh, guns and a crap ton of uh, mods you can uh, put on it. No, you had a limited selection. You had a limited uh, selection of everything. And there were situations and maps which called for different things. And my God, it you was papers. beautiful. It worked so perfectly. I loved it. Now, that's my favorite Call of Duty game. My favorite Halo game was Halo Reach. I, that is the... I feel like a lot of people choose Reach. Yeah, because Reach was fucking fantastic. Reach it was had, amazing, yes. It had uh, one of the most, if not the most, uh, poignant stories in all of Halo, outside of the books. Um, Halo couldn't have, or Bungie the, couldn't have left on a higher note. No, they really couldn't have. That, that was perfection. Uh, the gameplay itself was fantastic and the multiplayer especially forge oh my god i cannot tell you guys how much time i spent every freaking weekend just playing forge with random people just finding games randomly online either through a friend of a friend of a friend and like getting invited to forge lobbies just to do this custom game mode they came up with or was popular and it's just a Full lobby. Everyone had to be invited, but my god, everyone was there. Just so much fun, so many pleasantries, and everyone got along. Such great times. I loved it. <laughs> Black Ops 3 is $20 right now. We can read 1v1. Bro, do you really <laughs> want to play against me in an FPS game? 1v1? <laughs> Anyways. I could I'd fight you guys 1v3 and I just wouldn't be sweating. Come on now. Damn. <laughs> That's how but cold yeah. I am. <laughs> Those are my favorite COD and Halo games, and they yeah, have like, I forever feel like a place in my heart. In, if I were to rank the um, the COD games, like Modern Warfare 2 is just my absolute favorite, just like a lot of other people's, just because that memorable campaign, plus I think the online was perfection. Um, also that Hans except, Zimmer score. Except Modern Warfare 3, the original Modern Warfare 3, I also really liked the... A lot of people didn't like the online for Modern Warfare 3. I liked it a lot more than Modern Warfare 2. Really? I did. I did. I don't know what it was like. The it, it felt more responsive to me as a game. I liked the gunplay a lot more in three, but I think the story and uh, like just the overall vibe, Modern Warfare Two is way better. Uh, I would say Black Ops Two would probably be my second, just because again, I, I I ran through that. I played so much of that and zombies and stuff and playing online. Um, but for Halo, I Reach is like my second favorite. ODST is my favorite storyline. I I can't the the soundtrack, the entire mood of the entire thing. Listening to the audio files of like what's happening to um New Mombosa, while well, they're being New glassed. Mombosa, yeah, yeah, like mm -hmm. that that I love that type of storytelling. You know, being able to then seeing like the empty streets and like just the only thing that <clears throat> to me would make it a lot better if they had dead bodies laying around to tell more of the story of like yo the Covenant came here and fucked us up. Cause that's like that would have been a lot crazier, you know. Instead of just like the the whole like uh, finding people's helmets from the other ODSTs, stuff like that. But it's still a crazy story. I I think that's amazing. Uh, John, do you know how the private went out? The private? Yeah, the person you played as in ODST. No, that's the rookie. Or rookie, I mean. No. Uh, got ganked. <laughs> uh, by um. Not criminal. Um, Apparently, you don't the, know one either. One of the outer colony people, um, the terrorists, the insurrectionists, one of them took him out. What? In the books, yeah. Oh, I see. I don't read the books. Wow, that sucks. What the hell? Yeah, the they did the rookie dirty. It was yeah, a really dude. good book. I mean, that's... Just because a, a character I like dies doesn't mean it's not a great story, right? <laughs> like That's oh, yeah, part yeah, of the no. reason why I think Reach has an amazing story as well. <laughs> Yeah, there's lots of death in that story. But uh, so much speaking death. speaking of video games, uh, I, I wrote this because I was watching game trailers. Because I was, I think I was talking to you, Alex, about the mm. Halo live action season two was happening. Yes, God. And 
I was just like, dude, I remember watching the trailers for like Halo 3 and Halo Reach and being like, oh my god, these are amazing trailers. And this led me down a whole like rabbit hole of like watching old game trailers that got me hella hyped. So it made me think about like a lot of game trailers that were hella hyped. So like StarCraft 2, when they dropped the Protoss campaign, the um Legacy of the Void. I fucking got out of my chair and I started screaming, bro. Like my <laughs> life for ire, bro. Like, hold on, do I have Legacy of the Void in here? Do I have like Oh, I have Wings of Liberty. Damn it. But I love StarCraft. Okay. <laughs> were were you having one of those moments Starcraft. like Etika watching the uh, Super Smash Brothers reveal? I don't think I've ever seen that Etika uh, watching the Super Smash Brothers like, reveal. Going yeah. absolutely batshit crazy. <laughs> yeah, but like, because I first of all, I, I'm a Protoss for life. You know, you must construct additional pylons. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I main Protoss all day, every day. Uh, but. Yeah, Legacy of the Void, the trailer is so hype, bro. Oh my god. And I love the campaign. It was so great. I love I love StarCraft. I'm so sad that StarCraft 2 performed so financially poorly compared to like fucking the Sparkle Horse from WoW. <laughs> the first microtransaction in WoW made Fuck more that money. One specific Microsoft employee. One one microtransaction made more than all of Wings of Liberty, bro. Like what? That's insane. That's such a shame. I love RTSs too, but it is what it is. But yeah, and then I, I watched like a bunch of the, the Halo live action trailers and tra just the Halo trailers in general. Fucking phenomenal, bro. I was like getting uh, chills just watching like um, Bleed. My favorite right? is probably that Irish one. Uh, the one for ODST where uh, it was the uh, it was the Irish trailer. Uh, they were singing um of their training and then they showed them uh going down to battle and just it was a song the whole time it was fucking amazing don't think I've ever it gave seen me that, that trailer. I don't think are I've you seen serious that no, yeah oh my god hold on i gotta find this for you guys well you... I, we, we're not gonna watch it on stream no, 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 we're not gonna watch it on stream dmca'd no but like watching so like i recently got into four uh, warhammer 40k but one of the trailers that all right watch your trailer, fucking wallet I, I watched the trailer for Mechanicus, right? And it's like, it's an RTS, so I like that. And it's 40K, and I like that. But the trailer alone is like, ever since I knew the weakness of my flesh, it sickened me. And like, the certainty of steel. And I'm just like, dude, the, the filter that they have on the voice, the fucking acting, the dialogue, the fucking background music, the doom, doom. And I'm just like, yo, Adeptus Mechanicus, let's go! <laughs> And I bought yeah, the game because I watched the trailer. It's like that your alone by itself. Fucked. Oh my god! Yeah, I, I'm getting into the 40k lore. I, I'm not sure if I want to get into 40k yet, but just learning the lore itself is freaking nuts. Uh, Listen, but I'll talk about that in a different step, time. Man, this is, this is just the first. No, step. bro. Like, do you remember during the Super Bowl when they had the Halo 3 trailer, where it's like, um, the now the Starry Night trailer? Yeah, it's like. Do you ever believe there's something else out there? And it's just like, it's just for Halo 3. In the Super Bowl, yeah. by the way, it's just crazy, right? This type of marketing is crazy. You know, it's, it's like, like the, it's like the paying kids a million dollars for this. It's like the kids looking up at the stars and say, you ever wonder what's up there? <laughs> yeah. Amazing trailer, dude. Then remembering Reach? Bro. The fucking, oh my God. There was that, uh, they had that, the stop motion one where they had the minifigures and stuff. And it's just like all the effects and shit, and it's just a panorama of what's happening on the battlefield with Master Chief in the middle and like everything else surrounding, like Warhogs getting blown up, fucking Elite and Covenant just getting blown up. And it's just like, dude. And it was just a fucking stop, like that was even stop motion. It was just a panorama of a figure set. That's it. Hmm. That was the entire fucking trailer. But it was so cool. And then, you know, Reach is fucking, um, advertisement the campaign for that the advertising campaign where you see uh, i think it's cat right the um she has to pick up the bomb and then george picks up the bomb and goes up to the ship instead yes yeah dude fucking phenomenal then they had the uh the live action trailer that they did for i believe it was also halo 3 where it's just like they had the actual like they outfitted an actual truck to make it look like a warthog there's fucking sniper fire they're like you know they're waiting on the chief they're like we found him it's like good Get him a weapon. It's just like, oh, Halo 3! Halo 3! I was wrong. It's actually a Halo 3 trailer, mm. not an ODST. It is, a, OD it is about the ODST. About, but... um, do you want me to send it to you? I'm not going to watch it right now, but you can. Okay. Yeah. 
and all I could think about was like, man, why can't Actually, the live action here. have even a fraction of the ability to get me hype for Halo as the trailers did? Do Fucking you know, trailers for a game. You know, there was something that happened with um, uh, Mass Effect Three. Um, when, right after the game launched, there was a trailer, and it, it was, like, advertised as a trailer for the game, and there's, like, no gameplay in it, no nothing, and it's just some random person, like, talking, like, all this very, uh, uh, high-minded stuff. It's like, yeah, we, we fought for so long, da 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 and, like, I, I remember thinking, like, this is a really weird advertisement for your game. Come to find out, it's the after credit sequence from Mass Effect 3 you being used as a trailer. But I also found out why the voice acting in it is so bad. It's because the person they got to do the voice of the old man in that that sequence is actually Buzz Aldrin. Oh, oh what? My God. Yeah, it's Buzz Aldrin, and the person he's talking to, the kid that he's talking to, is his actual real life grandson. That's insane! Oh shit! Holy crap! Yeah. That's actually really cool. So it's like, yeah, the voice acting is bad, but like, this is someone who was on the fucking moon. I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool historically. <clears throat> Halo Landfall was the trailer I'm thinking of. The six-minute live-action video. Like, oh, yeah. I remember that, too. Yeah, that's that that's the one where good. it's like, dude, it's brutal. Because you see, like, the dude gets stabbed with a fucking um, spike gun or whatever the... Uh, mm. I don't... The spiker, yeah. I think it's the called. Spiker. The spike yeah. grenade. No, the gun. It's a, I think oh, it's the gun. The yes, the yeah. gun. Yeah, he gets stabbed by the spiker. Then he's, like, still fucking firing, dude. It's just like... <laughs> They're all just like, get in here! We found the chief! Get in here! And it's like, dude, he has the fucking rocket and the snipers, and they're just, oh, God, it's such a good live-action trailer. Classy Ulysses, it's really funny you bring up the Fallout show, because I wanted to talk about that. <laughs> I have been, I, I have not watched it yet, because I remember Jacob saying he liked it. He's like, mm. it's actually not terrible. So I was like, okay, if Jacob thinks it's not terrible, then I might give it a watch. And now you finished watching it, and I'm like, yeah, I kind of so want to watch it now. I, I straight watching... up think it's the best game adaptation show that has it's... been created so far. It's mm -hmm. certainly I up really there. Do. I finished. I finished watching the the eighth and final episode of the first season, uh, literally an hour before we started uh, recording this. Uh, oh, fresh. It's I yes um uh, I love it as a longtime Fallout fan I've played all the games uh except for seventy six because fuck seventy six um yeah fuck you <laughs> oh, wow wow bro um they fixed it it's fine okay oh no no, no um, it still has bugs here and there but nowhere near it's a Bethesda game of course it has it's bugs. a Bethesda oh, yeah. game <laughs> uh but no I I absolutely adored it for all the people out there online that are talking about it breaks lore it breaks canon no, yeah it if you want to sit there and fucking nitpick yeah no it but doesn't it doesn't it specifically it doesn't, really. doesn't. It no doesn't. it doesn't I mean, break because I remember the I remember watching someone a video was talking about it hmm. the uh the showrunners for the Fallout show they talked to Bethesda, and Bethesda was basically like, you can make any story you want in our universe, just don't include these places. Because mm -hmm. there are places that already have established lore, or mm -hmm. places that they will have established lore. Which is like the leap yeah. where everyone's like, oh, the new Fallout 6 is going to be, or Fallout 5 is going to be in, um, set in California. Yeah. Um, or like show. Oregon. Oregon or California, I forget. It's gonna probably gonna be on the West Coast. It sounds like because there apparently yeah. there was a because list of things a, that yeah. they came up with for the story, and and Todd Howard's like, no, don't do this because this is gonna be in the next game. <laughs> yeah, so it's like we we kind of have a leak on what we know what the next area is, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, so the, or, to. And if they could link into the origins of the NCR too, that'd be cool. Oh, dude. that'd be so don't cool. you think that'd I, be cool? Bring it back to I, Fallout New Vegas, bro. I went into this show. As a, as a Fallout fan of the, of the games, with very low expectations. Like, they, were, yep. they weren't on the Same. ground. They were in, the bar was in hell. It was so low. <laughs> um, I was so pleasantly surprised and blown away by absolutely everything that I saw. It feels like a Fallout game with its writing and its acting. The humor feels like it's straight out of, like, Fallout 1 and 2. Um... The story feels very believable that it could be taking place in the Fallout universe. I'm glad they didn't try to straight up adapt one of the games, and they just told an original story within the Fallout universe. Yeah, yeah I'm so happy it, about it that. It seems like doing video game adaptations, whenever they try to, like, retell the story, it's never fucking as good, right? Except you know, for have... The Last of Us. 
because the last of us followed it they they basically well, last of us is on a railroad is the thing so you don't have it's, to it's... worry too much about that yeah yeah so it's, well, it's I mean, a cinematic no, 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 no. game already no, no, no. so with the last of us the live action um they did change a bunch of things like for example how the the virus actually works right the cordyceps and they added works. some they they expanded on some lore that and was they, in the game yeah, right like when they when they expand the, the entire episode with frank and going through like the history of frank before we meet frank and uh joel meets frank right mm -hmm. in the game we just know that joel because like i have a friend he comes and visits him you just find out he's actually dead and he leaves notes and you, these mm -hmm. notes you can learn like oh frank had a husband uh, you know, and it, you know, first, first and foremost, the people who hated on that episode because they're like, Ugh, gay media. It's like, dude, Frank was gay this entire time. Have you played the game? <laughs> yeah, <It clearly laughs> he was gay shows. this entire time. You obviously have not played the who actually. Yeah, seriously. yeah, like I mean, you're obviously from what not I understand, a fan of the series. Because I never, I never played, I never played The Last of Us. But from what I understand, that character that's in the game that's also gay in the show is not a huge character in the game. No, not because he's so Joel is basically like, hey, I know a guy who can get us supplies. Uh, and mm -hmm. that's what the episode's about. You know, Joel's like, hey, I know a guy who can get us uh, a car, you know, a battery for a car. So that's where they go there in the show. And you play as Ellie throughout and you learn, you find these notes and you basically learn like who Frank was as a person, uh, the story behind Joel and Frank and stuff like that. And um, Tessa, Tessa, is it Tessa? Not Tessa. Um, whoever Joel's friend was, I forgot her name. Not important. But Frank's not a big major character. Like we don't actually yeah. even see him. But um, point is with how he, he was gay the entire time. So the people who yeah. were upset about showing Frank being actually gay, and I'm like, what? What is wrong with people? <laughs> You're obviously not a fan of the actual game series. Like, fuck off. It's good yeah. writing. And that entire episode, beautiful. I loved it because I like backstory. I, it's like, yeah, we kind of know Frank a little bit, but we, how did he actually get here? And it's like, now we actually learn. And I'm like, dude, this is, first of all, I love Nick Offerman. Amazing, phenomenal actor. And he, he pulled it off fucking well, dude. It's just. But like Chinoda says, it is on. Uh, it, it's a very linear experience. Like you, it's pretty hard to. The story itself was already good. You can't really deviate from it. And again, I haven't played Last of Us 2, so I can't talk about the story too much. I all I only know what happened, what what happened to the act, uh, voice actors, and what happened to the story as a result of like the leaks. fighting with the uh, yeah. It is just like this whole entire thing with Troy Baker, and I'm just like, you know what? I I need to play Last of Us 2 before I watch the second season of Last of Us whenever that comes out because I need to compare and contrast. Hmm. I need to be able to do that because I was doing that with season one of the show and the game. And just like they did it perfectly, they basically kept everything that was core to the story and expanded on things that weren't, and made it a better experience. The practical effects were fucking amazing, and um, I feel like every other video game adaptation, live action adaptation, has been poor so far because they either don't recreate the good stuff and enhance the rest, and it's like if you're not gonna do that, like with um, The Witcher, right? I personally think season one of The Witcher was all right. I didn't hate it. Um, and then until the end, then they started changing the story too much. And it's just like, okay, now you're fucking with it. Like, mm -hmm. Henry Cavill can only save this show so much by being a phenomenal actor. His okay? pecs are only that good. I mean, it's, just, it's only <laughs> it, so much you can do with his like, pecs. The story, it's so like... so much they, drool I can wipe away. Well, the worst part was that they started changing the story, and then they started changing the character. You know, this is why the live-action Halo fucking sucks. It's because they, mm -hmm. they changed the character of who Master Chief is supposed to be. How dare yeah. you speak against Master Cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> master cheeks <laughs> so yeah i the the halo show is, is so bad but i will say it, like there are there's proof out there that you can make great video game adaptations uh even with with really out there source material like fallout is really out there if you think about it like it's wacky yeah. it's it's crazy it's gory as hell i like the fact that with um with this uh, the the fallout show they're kind of treating it as the brutality of it the same way they did in the first two games. Like, people don't think about it today, but the original Fallout games were brutal as hell. Extremely, yeah. And I, I'm not talking about, like, the, the, the difficulty of the games. Like, the story of the games is brutal. Yeah. Uh, Though I'll argue glad... a lot of people actually haven't played uh, 1 and 2. I know I haven't. Yeah, I, I haven't yeah. played 1 and 2. Yeah. So I, I only know but... cursory knowledge of 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. same. Um, um, Alex, let I, me ask, 
like no spoilers how hard i want to spoil you... so much about this I know, show you can't you can't <laughs> you can't how hard did you squeal at the very last image oh you have no idea bro spoilers come like... on. I'm, I'm trying to watch it please don't uh, you have no. no idea what we're talking about bro i'm, I'm i don't just... I, I don't want to hear it i don't this is spoilers. That's why I will I said say... no spoilers <laughs> I, I will say there were certain things I was very surprised about, like um, the fact that they even acknowledge anything about New Vegas. I was Wait, pleasantly surprised I, I about just, that. It just made me think of something. Modern Warfare 2 is the one with no Russian, right? The mission, yes. no Russian? Yes. Okay, yes. I was like, that's also another reason I really loved it. The no Russian mission, bro, in the beginning. No Russian. Bro. Bro. Um, that was hardcore. <laughs> um, Where was I going? Oh, um, and I, I like the... I, I like the fact that they've put out a lot of hooks for season two because season two has been announced. Um, yeah. Like I think two days after it aired on Amazon prime video, they announced it was renewed for a second season. Um, and they have a lot of really good hooks out there yeah. for some stuff they can do in, in season two, especially now knowing where the story seems to be going. I'm really excited because my favorite oh, game bro, is don't. New Vegas. Stop hyping don't. me up. Alex, Dude, you... Why? Why would Alex? Alex that's spoilers, you fucking moron. They're going to Again, New Vegas, bro. Oh. It's not a spoiler. I'm sorry. It's just not. That's a huge spoiler, Alex. We had a whole talk about this. We I'm had... sorry. It's just y'all have a very different John, definition I'm sorry. of spoilers than I do. John, I'm sorry. I shouldn't I shouldn't even have you know with them. You know what? Hmm. It's fine. I actually don't care about spoilers. <laughs> I'll still watch stuff. If even if See? I have future knowledge, I don't care. I, I'm one of those rare types who don't care. Like, yeah, I, I respect too. people who don't want spoilers. I, I will respect their opinion. And I will try my best not to spoil stuff, but I don't. I personally do not care about spoilers. See, the difference is I don't. I what I think is a spoiler, what other people think are spoilers, two very different things. Yeah. But yeah, I. Uh, yes, I was so that makes me so. If they're going to New Vegas, though, that that makes me question like. Wait, I thought Todd Howard said you can't do anything with established media. So now I'm piecing together like, okay, so who do they show at the end of it? And now I think, do they meet the courier? And it's probably who. Nothing or... else. Not Alex. Shut yeah! the fuck up, Alex. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> don't say anything. Don't do anything. Don't even react. <laughs> Nothing. Not I'm literally gonna. Goddamn I'm literally. Thing. Hey, hey, shut up. I'm literally gonna say something that Todd Howard said with in an interview. Okay. Okay, that's fine. This takes place between New Vegas and Fallout Four. Like no, the events of I this thought, take place between New Vegas and Fallout Four. I thought they said uh this no, this takes place after, right? Isn't that what they said? After well, all says, the games? It says it takes place two hundred and nineteen years after the bombs fall. And if I remember right, Fallout Four takes place two hundred and twenty three years after the bombs fall. Oh I, hold on. Let me no check idea. real quick. As long as there's Brahmin, there I'm there just, is a Brahmin that shows up. You know up. what I'm more upset about, other than like not the spoilers don't bother me. You know what upsets me? The fact that you're hyping the fuck out of it. That's what bothers me because now I'm like, you know, I'm gonna have to watch this with more critical eye. You know, you're doing this to yourself. Where I'm just gonna shit on every little thing now. You're fucking mm, yourself, bro. You already do that. <laughs> I'm not worried <laughs> about that. You already do no, that. I I am less critical of something if I know nothing about it. I am a mm. lot less critical. If I know nothing about it, if I know anything about it, I am a lot more critical and that makes my enjoyment of it less like good because <laughs> I can hey. believe being pleasantly surprised by the good is better than just having higher expectations. Okay. Oh, is it set 10 years after fallout four? Okay. Then my math must be wrong about when that takes place. Then fallout four takes place in 2287 fallout TV show takes place in 2296. Okay. So I, my math was wrong about the when the bombs drop. Okay, um, well, I listen. I just I'm happy that it's good. I'm I'm really happy that it's good because the last thing I wanted was another shitty adaptation of one of my favorite game franchises. No, this was <laughs> my heart can amazing. only take so much. <laughs> um. Yeah. Also, I want to say congratulations to Ella Purnell, who plays the main one of the main characters in the Fallout vault, show, the is Vault that Dweller. Vault girl? Okay. The Vault yeah. Girl, yeah. Um uh, she has now been Her a main stardom. character in two successful video game adaptations. Because she is one? also the voice the voice of Jinx in Arcane. Oh. Yeah. Her stardom is really taking off, and I'm super happy for her. I really yeah. am. Where is my Okami adaptation? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <Freaking> never. <laughs> never. 
I think Okami yeah. is a cult classic. I like Okami. I think it's a fun game, but I don't think anyone else like cares. It's it's such a minority of people who like Okami. And I want to say last thing about the the Fallout show is that I'm also happy that its success has led to a huge boost in sales and play for yeah, the I remember, Fallout um, games on Steam. I don't remember if it was you or if it was Jacob that was like, oh, weird, Fallout got an update. And I'm like, yeah, because the show just came out. <laughs> of course they're going to update it before this. Yeah, the Fallout 4 <laughs> just got a 14 gigabyte update. <laughs> I think yeah, it was Jacob. I, I don't remember who it was. It's one of the two that was, like, surprised about the update. And all I could think was, like, because of the new show, they probably updated for that. Because yeah. it happens to every actual um, video game show. The video game, people will drive fans to actually play the video games. Like, it, it, there's statistical, like, there's a reason people create media, <laughs> and it's to drive people to the sources. And we know this through manga sales, we know this through light novel sales for, uh, like, anime, so why wouldn't it be true for video games? That's yeah, true. well, I mean, look at what happened with, uh, with Edge Runners, right? When Edge Runners came out, they added a bunch of shit to Cyberpunk 2077. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I will say I'm a little bit sad that Fallout London is, uh, getting indefinitely delayed because of the update because they have to fix a bunch of stuff yeah the one thing i don't agree with the the i guess it's one of the people that's in charge of that mod went on to social media and start bitching about bethesda never told us anything like dude yeah. you're a mod bethesda didn't owe you an explanation for shit <laughs> they yes. didn't but at the same time i feel like this was one of those public community things that was so heavily advertised and everyone knows about it i feel like they could have been like hey we're planning on doing this i get him being upset about it i get him being upset about it but like he's talking about like he's a fucking employee of bethesda that didn't know this was coming so, no, no, i mean yeah. i think it's a little bit um <laughs> there's a little bit of an ass hattery moment in my opinion because even mm -hmm. so as a game developer even as a game developer who makes video games with systems, game uh, console companies and stuff will just drop information on you like last minute. They do that mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. Like, oh, hey, also, we're updating and doing this. And it's like, dude, I'm supposed to launch in a fucking month. Are you kidding me? And it's like, yep, I'm not kidding you. Or like, nope, we're not kidding you. So here you go. And you're like, fuck! <laughs> so, like, yeah, it sucks, but that's just the industry. So. <laughs> yeah. I wish it wasn't that way, but... Yeah, but, you know, because th to maintain a competitive edge against, like, you know, especially for console makers and stuff like that, they, they have updates that they know that they need to fix, and they have certain launch titles that they need their system to work for, so they're going to cater to that. Like, the ones, you know, for PlayStation, for example, Sony exclusive games, uh, launch titles, they're going to cater their build to that. Anyone yeah. else who wants to build on their engine, good fucking luck. Like, here's the update, good luck. Because you don't have to update or anything like that. You just have to make sure, like, okay, does my version still work on the update? Because it should be backwards compatible. Most of the time it is. But when you get new updates for firmware especially, you can have better um, utilization, better optimization. So yeah. that would, that can break your game, but it also can save it from being shit. It's a balance. Yeah. But yeah, and I mean, know, as a as, as makers, someone who yeah, no. for for mod for mod makers, like dude, you're doing something for free. You don't actually even work in their industry. Even though I would say that people who work with mods are pretty uh close to game developers as well. Like they also yeah. code and they do the same type of stuff. They may not start to code like they they may not be the guys who create the source code, but they are the ones who can mess with it. So it's kind of like. They're kind of in the same vein of the same it's job. It's adjacent. Well, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, adjacent. You know, like, that's like something of. that happens, I think, occasionally in the video game industry is where a third party will come in to make DLC for a game. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's kind of what it is. It's just you're not getting paid for it. Yeah. But the thing is, if you are part of a mod team that does free mods, like, I understand the frustration, but you can't bitch about it. That's part yeah. of the industry. Because even the people who get paid to do it, this gets dropped on them all the time. Yeah. yeah, all and, the time. And the mod makers, this is not new. I mean, like, over the last several years, de well, a decade plus now, uh, Skyrim has gotten incremental updates on Steam constantly, and, like, all the mods break every time there's an update. <laughs> yeah. That's, now, that's granted, mods, usually dude. those updates are very, very small, so it's easy to go in and fix whatever's, you know, messed up, but still. I just hope, um... Uh... 
all the mods for Fallout 4 can be fixed because some of the people I know that did mods aren't even around anymore. Like, they mm. kicked the can, so hopefully someone yeah. has access and can uh, fix slash update those mods. As far as I know, at least for the games that I play with mods, all of them are open source, so that means we can actually see the code and we can edit it and stuff. Yeah, oh, that's okay. one of the be the beauties of having open source code. Like my game, I'm doing um open source. So if anyone wanted to copy my game and look at my code, they can because it's like I'm making a game and I'm crafting it. But if you want to know the basics of how my engine works or how my code works to mimic it, you can. Like that's not a problem to me because a game experience shouldn't be limited to just like it shouldn't be pr proprietary. My code is not proprietary. <laughs> like that's one of the things that really suck is that. A lot of game companies will do that. They'll treat their code as proprietary, and it's like, because it's not open source, people, they'll copyright it, like, oh, you can't make a game like ours. The like, Shadow of War Nemesis system. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm I'm assuming the mod stuff is all open source. I'm not too sure. I, I haven't seen any of the Fallout mods, though. Hmm. All right. There are some good ones out there. All right. Well, Shinoda, you're the only person that hasn't talked about anything yet, so what oh, do you yeah. want to talk uh... about? What did I have to talk about? Let me. Hey yo, Dude. you held a gun for the first time today. Oh yeah. Hey yo. Whoa. Hey yo. First, uh, I might have held one before, but yeah, no, first time ever first in time my shooting. No, I've still never shot a gun before, but oh uh, Pops was showing off this so new close. toy he got. Uh, it's a shotgun that he got. And I was like, yo, that's cool. And he's like, here, you want to hold it? I'm like, I've never held a gun before. You sure you want that to be my first? He's like, let's go to the other room. I have something for you. <laughs> so we go to the other room. He opens his uh, case and he's like, this is a 44 Red Hawk. It's a Ruger Red Hawk. And he's like, I love this thing. I have pinpoint precision with this. And he, he just gave it to me after checking the chamber. And I'm like, yeah, this is actually pretty fucking cool. He showed me how to shoot it and all that. And he's like, yeah, I need to. Uh, it's been a little while since I've cleaned it. But a little bit heavier than I expected. But well, so also at the same time, not at all. For people who don't know, a uh, a 44 is a magnum round. And the Red Hawk is it? The Ruger Red Hawk is a, it's a revolver. Yes. So, uh, revolvers are usually cut from steel, like a giant block of steel. So they are a lot heavier than like, um, a lot of modern, uh, weapons are made of polymer, um, like, a or composite polymer and composite. So like Glock, for example, is basically polymer is basically just plastic. It's heavy duty plastic, but it's plastic. Yeah. And same thing for um, high end plastic, right? I wouldn't even call it high end, but <laughs> better than what SIG's making lately. But anyway, uh, so a lot of old fashioned uh, guns are made cut from just steel, so they're they're heavy as shit. Like we're talking, it's a I don't know eight pound gun, seven pound gun. Um, but yeah, I mean <laughs> the classic. So I remember, I love cowboy guns, right? I I love revolvers. You love uh, the big iron. Yeah, a big iron. They're fun to hold. They're fun to shoot. They feel awesome, right? It makes you feel like it Billy really Badass, is. you know? Makes you feel like Billy Badass when you have one. When you fucking makes you feel like uh, D Dirty Harry. Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel, feel like... lucky, punk? I think Dirty Harry didn't carry a. Uh, he didn't he, he? What did he shoot? He carried a, a forty-four Magnum. Did he? What am I thinking yeah. of? I thought he. It was something else. It was uh, the the Casul. Was he need the four fifty-four Casul? No, I don't was, actually he, remember. It was a forty-four Magnum. Oh, there's another, like a fucking 10 auto or something. I don't remember what it was. There's a different gun I'm thinking of that was also part of a TV series that apparently was like, it's a really big Dirty round. Dirty Harry 44 Magnum. Oh, wow, yeah. okay. Smith & Wesson 44. Yeah. No, I'm thinking of a different show then. There was like some weapon that some guy carried that was like a really big round in a semi-automatic. It was like basically a revolver, but it's semi-automatic. And it's like the worst fucking gun in the world. <laughs> it jams all the time. It doesn't work. <laughs> Ah, I don't remember which one it is, but um, yeah, uh, I I think it's pretty cool to hold. It's a lot. It feels a lot more like this is a gun <laughs> when you hold it compared to like a fucking a subcompact. Oh, no, that's gun. not a gun. <laughs> this is a gun. <laughs> well, yeah, because like you've the the crazy thing is 
when you feel when you hold a revolver this feel like this is what i thought a gun should i think a gun feels like right when i've if i've never held a gun this is what i think a gun would feel like when i say gun and then you hold a like a a glock 19 or a 20 or something 20 i think glock 20 is like 10 mil but it's a bit pretty big round but you hold a glock for example and it's like this feels like a fucking nerf gun dude this is a, this is a toy really? thing. yeah because it's a little plastic huh yeah it doesn't feel like a gun it's like it's this does not feel like a gun I it's do least... remember the underbarrel revolver from Ghost in the Shell. That was the uh, Mataba Unica, and it's a very unique gun because that—that's literally what the, the name means. It means you are unique. <laughs> huh. that's cool. Yeah. As far as revolvers go, I think that uh, they are fun to look at. They are fun to shoot. I just don't think I would like carry them around for a daily carry, just because like revolvers are are very very basic. The maintenance on them are very basic. Uh, yeah. depending on the revolvers that you get, some of them can be very finicky. So you have to like, make sure you don't, you can't shoot it too often. You have to make sure it's, uh, maintained pretty well. Can't get it wet. But basically a revolver is a fucking, it's a steel cylinder. You put it in the shell and it has a hammer and you, the hammer just goes bang and it shoots like, it, and it goes into a muzzle or a barrel and it just goes out. That's it. It's, it's so basic. It doesn't have like an auto feed system like that. Other than the rotating cylinder that moves when you shoot. Yeah, I found that to be real cool. I was just, like, clicking it and I found it moving. I'm like, oh, man, that's actually really fucking cool. And then, uh, actually, you can uh, either pull it back, then uh, click, or just keep on clicking. Either way, I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. This is pretty fun. I can see why. Is it a double <laughs> action said... revolver? Yes, it's a double action. I've never uh, actually shot the 44 uh, Red Hawk. Yeah. I, I mean, I've seen it. I've I shoot uh, mainly for the revolvers I've shot at the range. I've shot a 357 uh, Magnum. I think that was a Colt. It's called Python, I believe. Is that the 357 one? Or is the 44 the Python? I think that's a 44. It might be a 44. I shot the Colt Python. By the way, John, I sent you a link to uh, the gun that uh, New Vegas is talking about in the chat the Mataba Unica from Ghost in the Shell. It's a cool looking okay. revolver. That looks pretty cool, dude. Cult Python is a double action revolver chambered for the 357 Magnum. Yeah, 357. Cartridge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The Python was a 357. So that's the only one that I've shot of in terms of revolvers. I've held plenty of other ones, but the only one I've shot is the 357. And I I, mm. I mean I want one. I want to carry one, but again, it's like the barrels are long, it's unwieldy, it's just like you only get like six shots. And it's like, ah, oh, dude. My compact 10 mil can take out a bear, and I get fucking 12, uh, 10 rounds plus one. Like, and it's compact. Like, you would never know I had one on me. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, uh, I really should take you to shoot. Next time you come up here, I take you to shoot. I take you out to the woods and shoot That'd all my guns. That'd be fun. I mean, I don't have any guns. ATF. I went. There was a boating <laughs> accident. <laughs> <laughs> um, just because I might have to go pretty soon. Uh, I will go again if you guys don't mind. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, go ahead. I actually need to update this Actually, on the if calendar. you want to speed run all the stuff you got here, go. Go, go, go. <laughs> okay. Um, I need to update this on the calendar, but I actually managed to get some uh, time off yesterday to go down to North Carolina for a Mother's Day trip. Nice. And cool. He's going yeah. to North Kakalaki. And the way I got it what? North was... <laughs> I, I don't know why. Here in the South, we call the Carolinas the Kakalakis. I don't know where that started. My but... um, my mom just came back from North Carolina, actually. And she's like, do you want to go buy land over there? It's so cheap. The I'm like, it is. What the hell it is really cheap. cheap. <laughs> where, where, what the hell would I do in North Carolina? I mean, I fit in pretty well, other than the fact that I'm not white. But <laughs> Look, hey, you're close enough. listen, you show up with booze and guns, they'll be like, yeah, you're you're white enough. <laughs> like, come on in. <laughs> he's he's not lying. If you show up with booze and guns, it don't matter what skin color you got down here. And hell, you know how to barbecue, too. They'll be like, yeah, come on yeah? in, buddy. <laughs> you, you know a thing or two about barbecue, man. And North Carolina barbecue is good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But so the way I managed to get time off for this trip was um, I was talking to my boss. Uh, and he's like, go look at schedule. I'm like, by the way, if I do go down there, what do you want? And uh, he's like, 
moonshine <laughs> i'm like you want moonshine <laughs> hell yeah southern moonshine yeah. baby and, and i'm like do you want like a flavor and he's like no nah, give me straight <laughs> i love that i love my supervisor he was just like yeah just gave me straight moonshine from there and like we're all good you can have the day so i'm like I, you have moonshine buddy okay you I'm got sorry, it. aren't you a uh government official technically speaking here Are you, did i just hear some bribery happening yeah <laughs> Hey John, I have some friends in the ATF. Would you like me hey, to talk? Hey, hey, hold, on, hold on, hold on now. <laughs> I'm writing all this down just oh, in case. Man. I was just a witness. I was. He's not a fucking involved. federal. He get his ass. <laughs> He's part of Florida. We'll just cut it off. <laughs> Circumcised Florida. The growing abscess that is the uh, <laughs> that is Florida. <laughs> Oh, uh, but yeah, no, so that's how I managed to get some time off to go down. I nice. bribed my supervisor. <laughs> Definitely cool. check uh, out some of that barbecue while you're down there. It's good. Oh, I'm going to be so fat by the time I come back up. I'm give, like, me some hot, give me some barbecue hot sauce. I'll be buying hot sauces. I'll be, I'll just be buying a shit ton of barbecue, packing it in some foil and bring it back home and throwing it in the freezer. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> then send it to me. <laughs> buddy you think it's gonna last <laughs> it ain't gonna last a trip up don't even lie it will it will I, uh, we'll... he'll have it no he'll have it sitting in the seat next to him and just be eating it. he's driving along <laughs> not in uh we're planning on going in tommy's truck he will kill me if i do that mm. just wear uh, a bib it's fine <laughs> uh the other thing I want to do is the weather's actually super nice around here right now. So I've just been thinking, I want a hammock out there. Like we have enough trees where I can actually, and they're like big, thick, sturdy trees. I'm like, I can actually attach something and put a hammock up. And you know, there's something to be said about the effect of a hammock. Cause I was like, hammocks don't seem comfortable. And yet for some reason, whenever it's like nice out, you just lay on a hammock and you just get rocked to sleep by the wind. It's just like, this feels nice. I don't know. I can't explain it. I, I feel like it's something to do with the psychology of like when we were babies being rocked and stuff. Like this is putting us to sleep because of that. Oh, it Some might psychological be. effect. Maybe. I'm like, obviously, I, I haven't done any research. This is just me talking out of my ass, but that's what it feels like. It sounds good, though. Yeah, I mean, Man, nice. I just, I just want to put some music on, grab the Bluetooth speaker, get some whiskey on the side, and just... Now you speak in Get my language. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I kind of want to do this now just because it sounds like the most perfect thing to do. It sounds so relaxing. And like, I'm just thinking about it more and more. I'm like, yeah, I want to just relax at home outside. And I don't do the outside too much. It's nasty out there. But like now and then I get the urge to actually go out. You're a nerd. You can't touch grass. What are you doing? Yeah, I know. We're supposed you to be think chronically I online. to be this dark without going outside? I think, I think it's part of that's your genetic, genetic you know, Yeah, <laughs> like... yeah that is mostly genetics, actually. <laughs> what am I saying? Listen, I think God left you in the oven a little bit too long when he made you. Damn! <laughs> <laughs> little crispy. <laughs> At least I'm seasoned correctly. <laughs> it's just seasoning, you know, my... It's just seasoning. My mom told me a story a long time ago, and I might oh, be getting it this wrong. Be oh, good. God. This is going to be good. But about the good. very first time when she was a child and she saw a black person. Oh. <laughs> okay, where's this going? Hey, hey, hey. You know, she turned to my, my grandmother, her mom, and said, what's wrong with that person? They have a bad sunburn. <laughs> <laughs> that's not as egregious as I thought it would be. Oh, that's not that. But when she, so for context, when she, she said this when she was like three years old. Oh. And the timing on uh, fucking waifu with this. <laughs> I mean, she ain't the only one. I literally think about going outside and I get a sunburn. Yeah, it's actually insane how fast she sunburns compared to me. No, oh, we're brown because our ancestors she... were made in the universal barbecue. <laughs> I mean, your wife's uh, a Brit. She, she yeah, doesn't exist. In... <laughs> oh. And final thing. Uh, what was the final thing? Oh, yeah. Audiobooks are fucking amazing, guys. I love I love normal books. I really do. Which leads me into our sponsor today. <laughs> Audible. <laughs> we don't have One an day. Audible sponsor. One day. Does Audible even sponsor people anymore? I don't see them do sponsorships anymore. Yes, they do. Anymore. No, they do. Okay. They, they do. do. 
Huh. Guess the YouTubers I watch don't aren't sponsored they, by them. They tend they tend to sponsor a lot of like the science YouTubers. Oh. Yeah. That and even sense. then yeah, they have a channels, yeah. They have a rotation of uh, who they sponsor. They'll be like, all right, for this time of year, it's these ones, uh, and then later it's these ones. I've noticed it. It is a rotation that they do. I've um, never uh, listened to an audiobook because the idea that I – why would I want to listen God, to a book yes. being read to me when I could just be listening to actual music? Like John, I don't, John. Your wife has a great idea. No, I'm I'm ignoring her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ignoring her. <laughs> yeah, like, um, I I don't understand why I would want to listen to a book being read to me instead of just listening to music while I'm driving. While I can understand that, um, though you for know me, what? To be fair, I also watch YouTube videos while I'm driving. Not actually watching the video, but I'll put on a YouTube video while I'm driving, like if it's an essay or something, just to listen to it. So I guess it's kind of the same thing as an audiobook, right? Kind a of. little bit. Um, or like putting on a podcast while you're driving or doing something. So it's like, I don't think I'd, I'm against the idea of an audiobook. It's just, if there's a book I want to read, I think I'd rather read it. Because when I read it myself, I can like, I can voice what they, I can make what they sound like in my head sound like what i think they sound like versus listening to someone speak it out it's like that ruins kind of the immersion of the book for me i can fully understand that uh but for me specifically i love the fact that they have their each each and own unique voices their um in their very own inflections um that come from these professional voice actors and i genuinely love hearing uh it from their perspective and see i'm, not I'm thinking mention... it's different compared to like a drama cd right so a drama cd in japan is when they they'll hire people to actually voice act out uh certain things in a book or a manga mm -hmm. so it's like you can and usually the people that they hire are going to be the people who are going to star in the anime so you'll get like a teaser of like, oh, this is what it's going to be like. It's gonna, what it can sound like. So if it does it like that, I'm fine with. But I assume that it was just a narrator in an audiobook where it's just like one person talking. It depends. It depends on the book. Um, okay. Some books, it's just a single narrator and they'll change up their voice now and then uh, for characters um, or say it in different ways for the characters. Um, other books, it'll have a narrator plus voice actors. Um for uh, each role and other books, and this is something I actually don't really like that much, it'll be just uh, voice actors for the characters and their narration. It, it, it's it's done, but it's not really, it, it's a weird way. I forgot like what exactly they do because it's been a while since I've listened to one of those. But it, it, that's the worst one, in my opinion. Everything else, um, what I normally love is a narrator who can do different voices as well and sell it to me, or a narrator plus other voice actors as well. The, um, typically, those are the more high-end books, uh, and they are done so damn excellently. And most of the time, so what I've been mostly listening to is um, Star Wars uh, audiobooks and Halo audiobooks, specifically the more uh, the latest releases, and they are done by professionals. And holy shit, it is legitimately like listening to a movie with full on narration. Uh, too, the music is there, the drama in the voices are there. Uh, it sells you. On the big scenes, like you can still imagine it in your head as uh, it's being described, and they do it so perfectly. And I love the fact that I can uh, do this while doing something else, but I can still pay attention. I, I I just love it so much, and not to mention, like I've mentioned this several times by now, but I just can't afford to have physical books anymore because of the space, not the cost the space i just don't have the space eventually that's a reality you run with any physical media whether it's dvds blu-rays uh books comics anything yeah You're the gonna... end goal of your physical media is going to be like at the uh it's going to be put on like the table for sale <laughs> yeah <laughs> at the exactly. garage sale and i'm just like on one hand yeah it's cool that like either i sell it off or someone else will sell it off after i kick it it's like that's cool and all 
But as I'm living right now, I just don't have space for this shit. And the fact that I can just have it online, I can just listen to it and easy for me. Speaking of physical media, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do have something along those lines I wanted to talk about. But do you have to go, Chinoda? Not yet. Tommy is not home okay. yet, so I'm good for now. <laughs> All right, be sure to check your Discord DMs before you go. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, so yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, like physical media and and stuff because that is kind of in the uh, in the news again. Um, there have been uh, companies out there who have, um, uh, shall we say, put their uh, their content out there online for people to download, buy and download, and then you know suddenly it's just not available for them anymore, mm. to, even though they bought it. Your license uh, for this this drm merchandise has expired yeah like there was um i forget the company that publishes the game but the whoever it was that published the crew um they just shut down those servers for the game and since it's an always online game now even if you bought it you can't even play the game anymore yeah. um there is no offline mode for it it's like it's one of those games that requires an internet connection to play um and since they took the servers offline it's like not can't even play this thing you own anymore uh, and it's kind of it's bringing that whole thing about physical media to the forefront again especially now with um, retailers like Best Buy has stopped selling physical media Target recently announced that it was going to stop selling physical media by the end of 2025 uh, Walmart is looking into doing the same sometime in the next few years um, and streaming services now like back in the day when there were only like two of them and they were like $10 a month it was great because they had all the content and it was like $20 a month to get all the stuff you wanted to watch. Uh, but now every single outfit and their mother wants to have a streaming service and charge like $30 a month for it for no ads. And it's just, it's might as well have cable. <sighs> might as well yeah. have cable. Um, so it's just, it's making me wonder, are we out to see like a big pirating renaissance like we had at the beginning of say the 21st century? I don't think so. And the reason I say that um, is really? because, well, you got to understand something about a lot of regular consumers. Mm -hmm. um, if it's annoying to do or if it's mm -hmm. annoying to sit through. If it takes uh, they effort. Don't do it. Yeah, because if you wanted to go to websites to, that let you illegally stream certain episodes of airing shows from certain series and stuff like that, you can. Mm -hmm. You can find that definitely. You know. Oh, yeah. Um, There's lots of them. Thanks to the Millennium Act enacted back in the day, uh, Google will try to hide a bunch of them. But, you know, there are a lot of online forums you can go to that will tell you, like, yeah, you can go here to go watch this. Go do this. You go do this. In fact, there's a dude on YouTube, on YouTube Shorts, <laughs> who, like, gives out just like, hey, if you wanted to go to these, you know, I don't know where you want to go to go watch anime or something. And then he goes like this, and then he has, like, websites that you can go to. <laughs> Mm -hmm. where he doesn't actually say it but he pops up as like you can he types it out yeah. it's like you know and if you were someone who wanted to watch tv or movies like i don't know where you would go and then it's like more websites more websites and like huge yeah. list of websites on one hand i love those on the other hand that's how you get shit shut down and i'm just like stop advertising it like this but the biggest issue is that for a lot of these websites that you go to, they have um, a bunch of tracking on you. There's a bunch of ads, a bunch of like, they're trying to make money off of you anyway, you know, yeah. of course, for you using this. So it's like whether or not it'll install shady cookies and stuff that track what you do and report your ass. And then mm -hmm. there's also like, if you wanted to download and torrent and stuff, uh, ISPs track that and stuff. You can't really torrent stuff anymore. If you torrent at a certain input output, the ISP will start like, taking a closer look at what you do, which is why you would want a, a VPN in case you wanted to do something like that. You should get a VPN. Thanks that to way. our sponsor. <laughs> <No. laughs> just, just like a FYI. But point is the amount of effort you have to go to, to get like a legible, good version of it, because there was a, I forgot what show. Oh, I remember I had, when I was doing that compare contrast for, um, <laughs> free Ren for, um, talking about like episode six, when you were dunking on the tie. When I was dunking on the tie for my expert opinion, because I'm obviously right all the time. And forget that everyone else disagreed with me. I don't care about that. 
it, literally uh, everyone disagree with you. We got so much shit on our YouTube video. I don't care. <laughs> like that's called having an opinion, buddy. I stand by my morals and my opinions. I don't give a shit. But, Do you know Natai actually went to our Spotify page and put a comment on that video? I think John's wrong. <laughs> no way. Did he actually? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a hater, bro. <laughs> Hold on. I got to go. Pick, I gotta, I'm going to go find it and see what he actually said, like, word for word. But I was uh, looking online for, like, that scene because on Crunchyroll, I can't just, like, take screen captures of it anymore. So I was like, okay, I'll take a screen capture of it on a um, on a website somewhere else. And I'm just like, the subtitles and stuff were just atrocious. And I'm just like, ah, I can't do this. I hate this. I hate this so much. Like, there's a bunch of ads. There's a bunch of tracking stuff. And it's just bad subtitles. And I'm like, this is more effort than it's worth. And the payoff is fucking shit. This is streaming at 480p. This looks like garbage. This is just god-awful. I hate it. So... It's like the alternative was to, you know, go and um, download it somewhere. And I was just like, this is too much effort. This is too much effort to prove a point. A single point, mind you. A single point. So it's just like (laughs) the amount of effort that you have to put in is going to be proportional to how many people are actually going to do it. Because it's a lot easier to pay. John, for you to look at. Okay. It's a lot easier to just pay $30 than to just like. Go get a VPN set up. Go to find these websites. And if these servers are down, what are you going to do? And, like, the time it takes to get it. It's like there's so much extra steps you have to take. And that's what I mean. Yeah. I uh, I forget who it was that originally said it, but it's very, very true that more often than not, piracy is the result of one of two things. Either pricing or availability. Yep. Yeah. Um, like ninety plus percent of all piracy is because of one of or t- one of those two things. Yeah, because like um, the, the entire idea behind um, oh, how do we stop people from pirating? It's like, well, you make it easier to get to or more available. cheaper. Yeah, cheaper and more accessible. That's all you have to do to make people not pirate. Because yeah. newsflash: the people who didn't want to pay for your stuff were never going to pay for your stuff. Yeah, you will literally not be able to force them. They would rather not pay. They would rather just like figure out a different. They will find creative ways to get around not paying to oh, be able to consume. Absolutely. I'm serious. Absolutely. Like, but the thing is, that portion is actually rather small. Yeah, it's when very in comparison minuscule. to the other two problems. Yeah, and this, that's this the majority. And this isn't just for like TV and anime or anything like that. Movies. It's also for video games. It's, the exact it's for same problem. all media. I mean, Literally, look at what Nintendo media. does with emulators. I mean, there's so down, many, like, like I mean, there's, yeah. so, there's so many, like, Nintendo emulators out there, and it's like, these are for games that Nintendo is no longer actively making, like, NES games, SNES yeah. games. Yeah, if I wanted to go They're play They're not making their... new versions of these games. <laughs> if I wanted to go play the original Diamond or Pearl, I either I have to shell out 600 bucks, or I can go get an emulator. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's or still the, that's have your reality. original cartridge like me. Yeah, no, that's yeah. the reality of the, the of everything right now. The fact that I have to at minimum pay six hundred dollars for a physical cartridge nowadays to play this if I had a working DS, that's insane. Make it it's more accessible. Insane. People will download the fuck out of it, Nintendo. Just put it on the store, dude. I just it's insane to me. It's free money. It's like why do they not? It, it doesn't make sense. It Nintendo really has doesn't. weird values. As as a company, Nintendo is a very weird company. They make very they have, weird rulings all the time. They have very old values. <clears throat> well, like, for example, when the Wii first came out, I remember Nintendo of America was saying, like, oh, well, we don't want to... We, we're going for a family-friendly image, so we're not mm-hmm. going to import Fatal Frame 4, which I'm like, I'm a fan of the Fatal Frame series. I, I like that horror series. And they didn't want to import Fatal Frame 4. So how do I get it? Well, I'd have to buy the Japanese version of it, and then I'd have to put on this, like, this patch, this English patch, because fans translated the game, by the way, <laughs> and I just had to put it onto my Wii just with an SD card, mm-hmm. and then I could play the game. But Nintendo of America didn't want to port it over, but they ported over uh, other not family-friendly games, like um, The Grudge. There was The Grudge video game on the Wii that is like a survival horror. But, yeah, it's just, like, it's ridiculous. I, I get I get that like they they have these things like especially Nintendo has the old games on their online subscriptions but there's nothing saying that they can't take them away after you've bought them and there's nothing saying that they can't just take them away for shits and giggles. Yeah, and that's like the biggest problem we face nowadays. Like if I wanted to play OG Diamond and Pearl, either I have to pirate it and use a ROM and use an emulator, or I have to pay like six hundred dollars for it. Instead of being able to just buy a, a digital copy and just own that digital copy. 
Mm. Like they don't let you do that. Cause when you're buying video games online, a lot of the times you're not buying the game. You're buying a license to play the game. Um, Which unless is you're Larian, complete utter bullshit. Yeah. Unless you're Larian studios with Baldur's gate three, because according to Larian studios, it says you actually own the game and you only, you can own the game and you can only, you can do a one-time transfer of the game. I read the, I read the terms of service. Yeah, which is actually <laughs> just really for shits cool of them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's actually really, really, cool, really cool of them though. Like, yeah, hey, they, I, I, have, I have, I have a, I have a, I have, I have Baldur's Gate three that I'm never gonna play again. Anybody wants it, hit me up. <laughs> I'll give you that transfer. <laughs> I'm serious. It's part of the uh, the terms of service. I, I I've read it, the terms of service and conditions, whatever. So like, but you mentioned anime earlier. The same thing happens with anime too. Like, there's so many older anime now that aren't available. On I got an example: service. the Macross Saga. Yeah, it wasn't it, available for the longest time. Everyone and, and their mother that I knew had watched it online because that's the only place it was available. Hell, I was no gonna one say, could like, buy it. No one could watch it anywhere. Ava for the longest time was yeah, Ava. Ava. Fucking Ava. Yeah, thank yeah, you. We couldn't watch it for a long time until Netflix paid like an arm and a leg for it. <laughs> Yeah. And then they fucked and then it up redubbed too. it and then and yeah. then redubbed it and fucking killed it but I mean up until very very recently the only way I could watch Golden Boy was on DVD. See? Yeah. And, and I got it like... right here baby. Yeah, so it's like as long as they make it more price friendly and more accessible to people, people won't won't pirate and it's just like because of that though and it's like everyone and their mom wants their own fucking streaming services. It's it's just garbage. It's all hot garbage. We're devolving into like subscription hell, to be honest. We we literally also, are. I don't know if they're I don't know if they're uh available somewhere now, but for the last few years, the only way you've been able to watch Ghost in the Shell standalone complex is on DVD. Yeah. He's supposed to really issues. Really good, but I do believe um they got introduced uh uh as part of um uh, Crunchyroll streaming. They, I might be wrong though. I can look it up real quick, but you might be right. Yeah. I just know that for like a period of nearly ten years, this was on no streaming service and no like. Well, also these uh, DVDs are out of print now. They're not even made anymore. So speaking of um, the hellscape that we're gonna eventually devolve into, I, I was gonna talk about this last um, WTF, but. Mm -hmm. I had to leave early because I, I, I was hanging out with my friends, I believe. Hmm. Um, but there has been a significant rise in AI-generated content. And oh, it's yes. concerning to me how many people don't realize that it's AI-generated or how hmm. many people just don't – straight up just do not fucking care. Yeah. Like, Especially with, like, AI art. Not, not just AI art. Just AI content on, like, YouTube. Mm -hmm. There are a bunch of YouTube short channels that are completely like I'm looking at it. I'm like, this is completely AI generated. Yeah, it's a AI voice. It's AI stock. AI it's, subtitles. Yeah, everything is garbage, and I'm just like, and, and there's no checking of it either. Like, there's so no. many shorts that are like AI generated where the subtitles aren't even like proofread. Yeah, and it's like because of all this, it's straight up just AI. The facts could could be wrong. You wouldn't even fucking know. And these videos are getting like they're making bonkers views like 500,000 or more views and I'm just like do people not and, and I'm looking at the comments people are engaging with it like it's an actual channel and it's like this is AI generated this is not an actual channel this is not a person yeah no but it's people... been a huge problem uh, one of the science YouTubers uh, I watch Kyle Hill actually called yes, out it yes in I remember a whole the science, video yeah the science channel one right I remember that yeah, one yeah Kyle Hill yes and he, he made a whole video about this how there's shit tons of channels making these Fake videos that are filled with fake content and like a lot of not misinformation, disinformation, aka or just they're straight lying up made up purpose. information. Yeah. yeah. No, they use stock they use stock images and they basically just write up a nothing burger of a, a statement about things that could be completely untrue. And they just they're just doing it to aggregate views. And, and then they and automate it's working. It's working. It's fucking working. Like it's evolved and it's gotten worse. And I'm just like, do people not realize this is just AI? There's a bunch yeah. of like reporting. I think a channels. lot of people don't. Yeah, it's just it's trash, dude. And I think like, I think the average on, like um... consumer because you're talking about like specifically with like YouTube Shorts or TikTok or you know, the yeah, yeah, very I'm short specifically form. I, I watch a lot of YouTube Shorts. Like yeah, those are the because like, I can't I can't choose what the algorithm gives me in YouTube Shorts. I just scroll true. and then it just unless pops you go up out and actively search for it in a channel or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
but with like the, the short form content, I think there's a lot of average users out there that are just so hungry for content. They don't care what the actual like content itself is. They just want it to shove down their throat. Yeah. They just like, want their brain rot. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, they just, want their I brain rot. It, yes. The minute I come across any YouTube short, that's just like, it's AI subtitles with AI voice over it. It looks like stock images. I'm just like, I scroll off. I'm like, I don't, I know that's AI. I don't want to, I don't fucking care. Like mm -hmm. this is not content I enjoy or care about. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's um, nothing I can do to like stop YouTube from recommending this to me. Cause it's like, Hey, people scrolling around this time are also watching this video. Let me feed it to you. Yeah. I hate it. Uh, and like on top of that, on though, that. Wait, oh, oh, go on. On, on top of that, there's also like a disturbing amount of AI porn. Like yes. not just I hate AI, it. AI AI generated porn art porn. Like on like on a certain uh website I, I frequent. Uh <laughs> <laughs> on a certain website. There's Do you like, wanna elaborate on that, sir? I will not elaborate any further on that. I'll but, start up say it on several of my subreddits. They have been flooded with uh, I, uh AI stuff and I'm just like I hate it. Like it all looks samey it all looks generic i'm just yeah, like it, is it looks like, so bad especially like, next to the stuff actual artists make like jeez this well, is as far garbage. as like porn images go and i'm just like this looks like trash like it doesn't look awful but i'm like it just feels not good i i don't i don't know how to explain the feeling of like when i read like a doujin right or yeah all right i look at porn images i'm just like pornographic image i'm like oh yeah that's nice that's that's right quality work that's quality that's quality right there i would beat my meat to this <laughs> <laughs> the highest rating you could give i would beat my meat to this hey i to, that's a very high rating in my opinion if <laughs> I would a beat high my, <laughs> i'm not like some other people who just like throw out their dick and just start beating it to anything all right <laughs> like you gotta have quality like, mm, it's gotta be it's no, gotta be quality no. for me to be like all right i'm gonna beat oh, my hello. meat to this <laughs> Look at right. the texture, so I'm guys, like, artwork, I, the quality. The I'm a connoisseur. Color. <laughs> exactly, bro. I could just, I could hear it right now. Vix would probably say that's the best compliment you can give my art. <laughs> I pulled my dick out immediately and started beating it to it. She makes good art. What can I say? <laughs> she does. Yeah. Love you, Vix. You're awesome. <laughs> when I when I see the AI porn, I'm just like, this is garbage. This doesn't make me feel good about anything like i would not beat my meat to this like i don't this even, does I, not get the dick hard it doesn't i'm just like this is just boring this sucks this like, does this, not spark joy it does not spark joy <laughs> there is no neuron activation going on here yeah my monk brain is not going like <laughs> which is insane because it's like it's not like the art is bad or anything it doesn't look bad it just doesn't look it just doesn't make me feel happy when I look at it. It doesn't. No, it, it lacks soul. I don't like, know. I, don't know really I, I honestly don't know if it's soul or anything. I just think that it's just not good. I wish I could explain how it feels to be in my mind when I see AI porn and how it, mm. the neurons do not fire. The synapses do not connect. I, I can't explain this feeling. We had, we I, had I, an episode of the podcast a little over, what was it, a year ago? where Vix was on, and we were talking about AI art like that. Well, we were, back it was a good did, episode. You guys remember, should go watch should it. go watch it. <laughs> I remember when you guys did that episode. I didn't see such a huge rise in it, but compared to now, like, literally every, I would say, every one in five posts that I see for images, it's just galleries of, like, AI porn. And I'm just like, yeah. who who is this for? Who wants this? Do people actually get off to this? I think there's a lot of... So one of the things I've talked about on this podcast is the fact that I really wish I could draw. Like, and I've tried. I've tried for so long to draw, and I just can't do it. My mind and my, my hands just don't work. You're the writer. Like You're not the drawer. I, I'm, gr I'm great at writing. I'm great at creating characters and creating settings. I can't draw for shit. And it's one of the great frustrations of my life that I can't actually draw out the things that I see up here. And... I think there's a lot of people that have that same frustration that for them, they're using AI art generation as a crutch. I think that using AI as a tool to help develop ideas and to get like a general understanding of it is mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think it's bad. I don't think AI is inherently bad. It's like, how it's I, used. It's how it's used. It's like any other tool. It's just yeah. how it's used. It's how it's used. Mm -hmm. I just think that everything that surrounds it right now with like the whole 
trying to <laughs> trying to make profits off of making AI art, basically like data scraping and stealing other people's art. Like that's scummy as shit. I think that's stupid. That's terrible. But using it to like try to like I I use ChatGPT a lot for like I, I kind of treat it like Google where I'll ask it questions to try to get a general understanding of a certain thing before I do a, a more in-depth review of something like if I'm like interested in the subject or something like that or a histor historical event hey it'll be used for fast food restaurants they probably already it already, right? they probably it already, already is are, yeah. uh Wendy's has started oh. rolling out AI food ordering at what their the drive throughs what? Yeah, you 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 roll up and you don't actually talk to a person. It's an AI that you talk to and it gets your order and it sends it to the kitchen. Okay, for most people, I think that would probably be fine so long as they could be easily understood. But there are several people that either have bro, you allergy can order restrictions. On an app. Like I don't. What's yeah. the point? <laughs> well, here's the thing. There's also people that are either really bad with tech or just don't want to use it and would rather actually yeah, talk I'm, to someone. No, no, no. But my point is. What's the point in rolling out the AI because the AI isn't going to be able to work any better than a human could at figuring out orders. If mm -hmm. I'm someone who can't order through an app, like I don't use the app or anything like that, or I don't have internet, whatever the phone, and I want to just go through a drive through it would be better to just have a regular person there who can understand what I'm saying. Yes, I have with the AI stuff, I've had stuff get messed up too. Yeah, it's just like it's. I mean, my orders get messed up when I order through the app. It's like, dude, it printed out a ticket, and you guys put in the wrong shit. And so, it's <laughs> um, a human error. So, so side tangent, I want to go on Facebook and AI stuff. I've been seeing so many. Like, I do go on it to like look at stuff. I yes, I am one Boomer. of those millennials that actually do use it. Actually, this is about boomers. I see so many uh, of my older uh much older friends uh who happen to be boomers they fall for so much ai stuff on facebook no. i'm like this is Dude. actually kind of horrifying like the guys recent, uh, this is not is, real there is that recent image of uh that showed donald trump and epstein in the same photo with like a young girl or something at a party uh -huh. And so many people were losing their shit, like, oh, Donald Trump confirmed photo at one of the Epstein parties. And I'm just like, dude, this is an AI photo. <laughs> this, is, this is all, this is Photoshop, like hella Photoshopped. But people were losing their absolute mind over it, thinking it was real. It's crazy. Yeah, it's probably because a lot of them don't even have the eye for looking at basic details or even seeing something wrong. They just glance over the image and like, holy shit, proof. But I feel like... <laughs> People who get their news from Facebook are also a different type of breed. Like, come on. Oh, they absolutely are. <laughs> They're the type of person who don't understand what tap to pay means. <laughs> it's the same type of person that'll go to only one media source for information, and that's it. And doesn't bother yeah. to do any research <laughs> no. at all. No, no. They're the, kind people... of, they're the kind of people who would be like, what do you mean you need my chip? That tracks me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the, th the it type does, of people who, technically. No, the type of people who get their news from Facebook are the type of people who will believe government official watchbook.com over like CNBC <laughs> or some shit, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this came from a reliable source. <laughs> what the government won't tell you.com. <laughs> the people's watchers.com. It's like, <laughs> what is their story? What What's their source? Like, their source is that they're all fucking AI-generated bots, and you fell for it, you fool. It's like, believe me, if we want to hide something, we actually hide it. You, it doesn't get found out for a very long time. No, I dealing working in uh in a factory, I deal with a lot of older people who, who do fall for these things, where they're like, they yeah. go to, like, the Babylon B and think that the satirical articles are real. I'm like, this is Babylon B, a well-known satirical website. Yeah, <laughs> this is like the or, national. Or the Onion. Yeah, the Onion, oh or was God. it National National Inquirer? Inquirer. Is that... Yeah. Well, that's that the... that's a that's an they actual are, tabloid that's been around for a, a tabloid, long time. But yeah. it's a tabloid thing. But that was however, like, however, like... they have broke real news before. Yeah, they really? have. They have. They were yeah. the first. They were the first people to break the uh, death of Princess Diana, I believe. Oh, I didn't yes. know that. Yes, oh, yes, they were. Um, Back in the day, I think they were also the first people to break uh, news of uh, RFK's death back in the in 1999. Yeah, like I hate the Inquirer, but they are an actual media source. Like they do yeah, their. But my homework. point is bullshit like, as it may be. People, <laughs> it's I, I I get it. You know, like it, it comes back to the whole um, 
if it's more annoying to reason if it doesn't align with my point of view why would it's i not right. <laughs> well the thing is it's easier to believe something uh that it aligns with my point of view so why would yeah. i do research it's like hey someone else thinks the same thing as me so we must be right so i'm validated now <laughs> yeah now i'm validated i don't have to do any research you know like the whole uh remember there was this article that was published that my um one of my old managers was talking about like, didn't you see that article published about diet sodas? They cause cancer. And I'm just like, okay. So I went and read the actual study. And as it turns out, the, uh, the study talks about how they tested in mice, how diet soda gave them cancer. They gave them, they injected them directly into the stomach, I believe, or in, into their blood. Yes. Yeah, at, um, directly the, um, into the stomach, the fake sugar stuff, sh sugar alternatives or substitutes. And, at the amount that they were injecting into these mice to make them develop stomach cancer was like equivalent to us drinking a thousand cans of soda a day. Yeah. So they <laughs> did that study entirely wrong. Well, the, the study now, is John, like... that sounds impossible to you. That sounds like a challenge to me. <laughs> no, my point is, listen, diet sodas are probably not great for you. Um... But they're better than real sodas. The real sugar will fuck me up. As a diabetic, it will fuck me up a lot faster than a diet soda will. All right? Um, there are other things that totally are Totally not drinking a diet soda right now. <laughs> yeah, like, it's literally all I have is just diet sodas. Like, because I'm, yeah. I'm diabetic. But point is, like, the sugar-free alternative water stuff. shit is that? Well, the thing is, this, this article was published, right? It's Calpico. It's not soda. It's, um, like, milk water. It's, like, yogurt? Oh. Yogurt mix thing? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. But my point is, this article got published, then people read it and was like, oh my god, diet sodas cause cancer! And it's like, okay, they, yes, they will eventually cause cancer. Just like you standing outside in the goddamn sun for 10 hours a day will give you fucking skin cancer. In okay? fact, you're more likely to get cancer from the sun than you are from diet soda. I'm more likely to get cancer from fucking inhaling smoke from a car driving in traffic two hours every day than I am for, for drinking diet soda. Oh, much more okay. likely. That just, percentage just, just is like, actually higher. Yeah, so it's... um. You're more that likely to get it from this, all these plastic water bottles we have, But too. the point is, a lot of people who are iffy about diet sodas are like, there's no way that you can make soda taste good and be a diet sugar substitute and it not be unhealthy. Because that is a, a weird thing. Like, chemicals can't be healthy for you, right? Like, I, I'm kind of a little bit on that path as well. It's like, yeah, I don't think things that are ultra processed are probably that great for us it's i don't not. think they're i don't think yeah, they're that heavily bad processed for us. foods are probably yeah. not great well upfs ultra processed foods are probably really bad for us right they are but everything in moderation and as long as i'm not fucking slamming 10 lunchables a day with like <laughs> and downing four liters of fucking diet soda a day i don't think i'll be fucking dying anytime soon from those things <laughs> like, from the other things maybe but not those yeah, things it, uh, yeah, I, I think I I have a higher chance of dying in traffic than I do of, of those other things. But it's like it's rough because people will believe what they want to believe, and as long as it aligns with my point of view, I stop there. That that's where my research stops. I found yeah. someone who has validated my opinion. They sound like they know what they're talking about, even though they're completely talking out their ass. Like mm -hmm. there was on um on Doctor Mike, he had a guy um, I believe he was a a, a a different doctor who was like smoking isn't that bad for you. And he's like, oh, what? He's like, you know that surgeons, uh, more surgeons uh, who smoke actually have less um, health problems at the end of the at the day. And Dr. Mike's like, you know that's because they die early, that they don't live long <laughs> enough to develop dementia. <laughs> Holy shit. He was like, yeah. So he, this, I don't remember who the guy, the actual doctor was who was saying smoking was good. But his research was like, yeah, my research shows that doctors who actually smoke cigarettes actually... Ha uh, don't develop Alzheimer's and um, dementia, dementia as often as... because they're not living long enough to develop yes! symptoms. and it's, it's like, like it's because they're the dying nuance. before they get that old. It's because they're dying before the age of 60. <laughs> and it's just like, well, you know, you're not technically wrong because the how you're phrasing it is technically right. They don't. You're right. People, Doctors who smoke a pack of cigarettes a day do not develop Alzheimer's or, or any of these other problems like the other doctors who live long because they're dying way before then. <laughs> they're dying of it's cancer like that, or something else it, way before. Yeah, It's, it's so like crazy. That, it's like that old joke of 100% uh, of people who drink uh, dihydrogen monoxide end up dying. It's true. Yeah, it's dihydrogen true. Dihydrogen monoxide is water. Cheers. 
It's yeah, serious. like don't get me wrong. I I I do this too. Help. I I think it's human nature to like see something as like yeah that makes sense and not question it. Right. It's if hard it makes not sense, to be biased one hundred percent. It's very hard. But the thing is, if someone questions it and someone actually challenges me on it, I, I then I research. I'm like okay, well you know what. I don't know for sure. Let me research. If this is something that I definitely don't know, and then things can change all the time too. That's the, that's the beauty of science. We can figure mm. shit out, and the more shit we figure out, the more we understand, the more we can look back at other things. And be like, hey, maybe we should relook at how we frame this in our mind. It happens it work. all the time, literally all the time. Yeah, like I remember, um, <laughs> I was fucking dunking on you, Alex, when you were like mm. posting stuff off of uh Twitter with like without resources and i'm like i'm like dude you're fucking wrong this is this uh the new thing for um berserk that's coming out with the black swordsman arc that's a fan project by studio eclipse i believe um mm. i remember looking at it, i'm like there's no way this got greenlit like what are you talking about and it's like no it's a fan it's fan project it's not yeah. an actual studio it's not an actual japanese animation studio and they're not they don't have the actual license it's a fan thing and I was yeah. like, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's a great fan it project. It looks very good for a fan project. It looks cool amazing yeah. for a fan project. But it it is yeah. a fan project. And it's like the uh cuz this is the same thing for like there's that um Oh my god, it was on Twitter, of course. It's always on Twitter. <laughs> As usual, it's, it's, everything's it's like, on Twitter. It's, it's like that. It's like that me, the Harry Potter meme. Like, why is it always when something goes wrong? It's you three, and it's like Twitter, <laughs> Reddit, four chan. <laughs> No, it's, it's Twitter, Facebook, and then um, then I'd say Reddit. 4chan is just you don't believe anything on 4chan. It's all stupid. No, you go there to ship post. <laughs> but no, uh, on Twitter there's that there's a, a account that posts Sakuga. It's like oh that Sakuga that was in this episode of this anime. Here are the people who worked on it, and mm -hmm. they legit just posted the wrong information. Wow. And, they like the the animator that they say worked on it or the artist or whatever that they said worked on it literally replies to this post saying yeah i didn't work on that <laughs> and then everyone's <laughs> was like who the fuck are you and it's like dude he is the guy they are talking about <laughs> he yeah. did not he the guy you are talking about saying who worked on it said i didn't work on it i'm pretty sure he didn't fucking work on it then huh i i will say you know if you're gonna That's be a big this, l if you're gonna be miscredited, it's not a bad way to be miscredited, but still miscredited. Yeah, but like it's just insane to me because no one again, people saw the original post, didn't see the reply, and they're like, Oh yeah, this guy did it. It's like, nope, he did not. He literally said he didn't do it. Literally in the replies. And other people are doubting him, and I was like, How are you gonna doubt the guy that this is about? He's telling you, he's the guy. Don't you think he would know if he worked on it? <laughs> <laughs> like what it's insane. Yeah. Uh, it actually is. But you know what is a good use of AI though? What? So the AI, AI presidents, because that's funny as shit. No, no, they. Yeah, had, I mean, news. I think the AI presidents is funny. Uh, do you guys have iPhones? No. no. Well, okay. technically, there's one right here. So, I didn't Tommy know uses this. it for his WeTuber. So, yes, I wish Tom was here so I could talk about this with Tom. Do you want me to ask him to come over? No, it's I, fine. Um, I can I, literally ask this, him not, if he wants to be. A this guest is a little quick. so. I remember watching a, a YouTube short from a indie VTuber who was talking about, yeah, a bunch of us use um, Apple products because the face tracking on the apps and stuff are actually pretty <laughs> impressive. And I remember I was FaceTiming my wife and she like turned on the emoji button thing where it like mm -hmm. it used AI face tracking. And I was just like, holy crap. It's like, it's following our eyes. It's following our tongues, our mouth, our fucking cheeks. It's moving and everything. And I was so impressed. And I was like, what the heck? So I was like, that short was right. Like, oh. Apple products and using their All AI right. for the face tracking. Special appearance. Special oh, appearance Tommy, of Tommy. Is Tommy coming on? Oh, God. Yep, he is. Oh, okay. Oh. Are we... Well, go oh, on. How is it... Wait, are you actually bringing him on VTuber form or, like, IRL form? IRL. I'm... Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he was going to, like, hop on with his VTuber. Uh, they're talking about VTubers and iPhones and tracking. Anyway, the person that... Uh, the person that he's bringing on here, Tommy, has actually uh, streamed with us before. Hi, Tommy. Hi. Hi, Tommy. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so um, I was talking about how the the Apple products, like as much as people can hate on Apple, like yeah. I don't like Apple too much either, but I was impressed with the face tracking because my wife – so I, I watched the indie VTuber who talked about like they use iPhones and stuff and um, iPads to track their faces for um, the VTubing rigs and stuff. <laughs> Yeah. And how impressive it is in, in such a, like, cheaper package than every other program. Mm -hmm. 
and I, I was like, that's kind of cool. So then my wife did the the emoji thing on when we were FaceTiming, and I was like watching the track, and I'm like, this is actually very impressive. I don't even have a rig on or anything like any of the dots, or, like the other people have, like the capture yeah. and stuff. And I was just like, wow, this is actually really cool. <laughs> yeah, and I don't know why you know to you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I use the iPhone X with uh, V Bridger. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about any of the the actual programs that are on the iPhones and stuff for that, but I do know that the that technology that Apple has inside of the phones are very impressive. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I know. As you see, I, that's why I was like, I don't know why Chinoda wanted you to come on. I, <laughs> that's have, I have no idea. Look, I got home from work. He's still on my computer. I want gummies. Okay, look. <laughs> Listen, VTubing. Anyway, this leads me into our segue of like to announce the new branch of Anime Club After Dark <laughs> VTubers. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'd love to. One sec. I think um, if I load this up correctly, I bet. I bet. Uh, one sec. Um, I know Vix has been on our podcast as her VTuber, so I know it works for this. Yeah, because I know all I got to do is just hit the. One sec. I have for like the last year or so I've really wanted to get my my podcast character done up as a VTuber since I do stream quite a bit. Yeah. I do know um, basic rigging and stuff, so I'm I'm like curious. I've been wanting to challenge myself with that just to like get Oh. 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 Yeah. Wait no, it's I didn't think that that would actually do it in real time. Oh. Uh let's see connect to iPhone. Uh yeah. One sec. Oh no, you're fine. You can go. <laughs> We're we're doing we're doing tech stuff. We're tech stuff. No, I'm just fucking around with some stuff. There we go. Yes, Noda did in fact evolve <laughs> and changed his race. <laughs> oh no! Yeah, no, he hey. became a white boy. <laughs> there oh, we go. It worked. There we go. There we go. Hey. Yeah, there's a version yeah. that came in this shit. <clears throat> nice. Oh. Yep. It works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think Vix does a virtual webcam when she does the when she's been on the podcast before. Yeah. But yeah, I'd love to get I'd I'd love to get a, a VTuber set up for for my podcast. Leave our flesh later. forms become VTube. Become VTuber. Help yeah, we can end up like... doing it for the podcast recordings too. Yeah, that could actually work pretty well. Yeah, let's let me just throw three thousand dollars onto a model and rigging, so I don't actually have to do it's it myself. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's just Tommy, money, you know John. guy. <laughs> Tommy, uh, you know anybody? <laughs> I, I, um. See, like as much as like I know, there's a lot of people who get into it by doing the reactive images because that's what I do on our streams. Yeah, and that's that's a good way to get a feel for like if you're if you're any good at streaming and Bro, if you have like a passion for it. But the 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 amount of um, expressiveness that a VTuber rigging has is so much better than just a reactive image. Mm. Well, I feel like VTubing isn't just like you have to have a cute model. You actually have to be entertaining to to be a well, streamer yes. first and foremost. Yes. Like, just because you put VTubing doesn't make you automatically popular. At least not yeah. anymore. Like the model, the model will get you the attention, oh. but you can actually yes. if you got to be funny to keep the audience. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can. Which you we can talked about in our in our actual VTubing episode. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can use a you can use a cute or. or a big boobed avatar to get people to click on your video but you can't use that just that to get people to stay because most people who watch vtubers stay because the person behind it is really funny i don't know man if amra fans are anything to judge the internet by sometimes the True. content isn't doesn't matter as long as you're hot sometimes you just gotta watch for the oh wait fuck i hit the wrong button uh <laughs> <laughs> Hey, look, I watch it for the plot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, there's the plot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think there's a lot of people that get into VTubing, especially in the last year or so, that think that it's just the, the avatar no, that gets you, the, gets you the audience and gets people coming back, and it's not. Yeah? It's not. Hmm. Get people yeah, that just on your me... debut. Um, it just made me think about, like, maybe we... Maybe if I'm bored enough... I'll 
if we can find someone to make the models for us, I can actually I can do rigging because I've done that for uh, my game stuff, 3D modeling rigging. Okay. Don't you have enough to do already, John? Yes, and have four other <laughs> game projects. Yes, I know. I'm a busy man. I'm a man who needs to keep himself busy. I'm always doing something. Mm-hmm. I have workaholic to be. Workaholic, John. I'm not a workaholic. I just get bored easy. Like how Tommy's just here listening to us now. I know. Like I'm waiting for Chinota to come back and finish the the podcast. I know but... he's sitting here. He saw me open a bag of Mike Tyson ear bites. Nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, here you can have my computer back. <laughs> Thank you. This is now Chinota. The whole rest of the time, this, this is, is Chinota. Chinota is now Tommy. Chinota is now Tommy. Yeah, Chinota has become VTube. Let me go. I'm switch it back there. There we go. Uh, close that. I mean, you can pay Vix to draw the model. She already drew in 2D forms. I mean, she can draw the reference materials, but from what I understand, to to create like character models for VTubing, it actually requires you to draw them a certain way. No, I'm not like it. Did I? Wait, I mean, I it's pretty easy there. to model a 3D character. Yeah, def- and, and there's probably way. multiple ways to do it. But well, I don't. Okay. The reason I say it's easy is because a lot of programs come preloaded with anime like style figures already. Yeah, <laughs> like sliders, using, um, you can just change certain things. Was it 3D Max Maxon? Oh my god, it was the high res sculptor I used. Point was the uh, there was a you could literally just import an anime bust for the head to mm-hmm. start. Like here's my anime figure. Same thing for like 3D models. You can just import a free one to start as the baseline and then you have to design around it. So it's it's not as difficult as you would think, but what I think is difficult is the if you make a very um intrinsic design like for oh the style choices and stuff oh like that. Oh my god. It's... What is going on over there, Chinoda? When we go past the doors, we automatically turn off the lights. So Tommy uh did that. He was like, "Wait, fuck." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed an actual appearance by a VTuber. Yes. VTuber. VTuber. But, John, you're right. The, the technology is actually very impressive with the face tracking these days. Yeah. It's like, I, it's cool. <laughs> it makes me want to do it. I'm like, hey, I got an iPhone. Like, I'm cool with this. Do you know a conspiracy work... theory I heard about VTubers recently? What? Because, you know, it, it's become the, the barrier of entry keeps going further and further down, right? Right. And. A lot of a lot of it uses like the phones to do the face tracking or or webcams to do face tracking, right? Um, well, I heard a conspiracy theory the other day that the reason they want it to be such a low barrier of entry is they want more people to do it so they can get more face scan information from people. Well, that's a that big... is not a conspiracy theory. That's the truth. Yeah, the reason I... why a bunch of apps have like a bunch of uh, filters, AI tuning filters, is because they want face scan data. That is actually true. That may, that part may be true, but the conspiracy theory is they want more and more people to become VTubers specifically so they have hours and hours and hours of face tracking. Holy shit. Data. John, do you remember the whole uh, Juggalo uh, face scan incident? Oh, what? I know what you're talking about. Oh, Alex. Okay, okay. okay. Um, so there was a protest and a bunch of people uh, put on Juggalo face uh, paint to... Um, you know, not be identified and stuff because, you know, that's actual face paint and a lot harder to identify faces after that. Okay. So, um, I know Snapchat did it. I don't remember if, like, a bunch of other um, social media also did it as well, but they uh, basically introduced a Juggalo filter and a whole bunch of people tried it and they collected the data on it. Now, anyone who uses a uh, Juggalo uh, paint... Can you can still be identified because <laughs> a whole bunch of people uh, was like, oh, cool, a filter. Let me put it on my face. And data gets hoarded. Data gets analyzed. Now, everyone, doesn't matter if whether you were part of uh, that, like whether you done it or not, you can be identified through Juggalo uh, paint, whereupon yeah, before sense. you couldn't. Because a sense. lot of people were just like, ha filter, let me put it on, put it up. Yeah. I uh, I don't know if I this mean, is still true about the Juggalo face paint, but I know that you know those uh, like the software they use to analyze uh, like security camera footage to match a face with a known criminal, right? 
Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is still true about the AI that that software uses, but for a while, that software could not recognize faces, even if you were like dead on right to the camera, if you had Juggalo face paint on. Mm-hmm. Really? It couldn't do it. Yeah. Huh. I don't know. If, I don't know if they've fixed that or if it's ever been fixed, but I know that for a long time that was true about like facial recognition software. I'm assuming after what I just talked about, it's probably something that they, they have the covered. Yeah, they probably did crack the maybe, code. Maybe the whole filter was why they wanted to do it. <laughs> I'm, that's, I'm telling you, that's not a conspiracy. That's just, that's reality. Yeah. People don't believe me when I say this. It's like, oh, you know, John's a crazy conspiracy theorist. I'm like, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's true. Yeah, some I'm, of this I'm stuff just, is actually true, I'm unfortunately. just saying, as crazy as you might think he is, Alex Jones was the first person to ever talk about MK Ultra. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I'm it. Just it's saying. so true. I hate the no. fact that that's true. Oh, God. Let's not get into Alex Jones anymore. <laughs> I, just I, saying. We... Listen. All right. Um, I was going to... Have you seen that video of that guy uh, on Chinese social media, the the dad who became a thirst trap? What? You guys no. know what? Okay, so if you don't want to get your face recognized, wear a mask, first and foremost. A mask makes you um, look a lot hotter than you actually are, by the way. Damn, I because should be it, wearing it all the time. Because um, a face mask hides imperfections. Like, if it's on an even face and rounded and stuff like that, you can hide the bottom. And it makes you look mm-hmm. better. Because as long as you have a good facial structure for your eyes and stuff... Which you can also trick with like um, contouring and stuff like that. But basically, there is this uh, Chinese father on social media who is going on social media and like trying to warn his daughter about like um, fake people online. Mm-hmm. And John still the, hates uh, the gay frogs. Yes, he does. Still has the gay frogs. What? Oh, I thought I said hates. No, John still has the gay frogs. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. No, so this. Uh, he wanted to go online to show people, like, uh, show his daughter, like, hey, beware of online people. They're all fake. Uh, and they can basically turn into anything else. And thanks to the comments on his uh, on the social media account, they were teaching the dad how to become a thirst trap to be, like, a, basically look like a fuckboy. And, like, his transformation, he went from dad to daddy. <laughs> like, holy shit. Wow. <laughs> like, they're like, all right, you need to wear this type of shirt. You need to dress like this. You should pose like this. Nice. And it's just like, I'm serious, dude. And I'm just like, I'm comparing the two. Like he, this, like the first before he became the thirst trap. It's like he just looks like like your normal dad, and then he becomes a thirst trap. And it's like, hey, yo, damn, <laughs> yeah, it was nutty. <laughs> also, Jacob, you're wrong on this because you've been on a plane <laughs> because of that single fact alone, buddy. They know you. Yeah, they know. They know. They know. They know. <laughs> They've been looking at your Discord message history. They know. They know. <clears throat> no, I don't want the cat. Speaking speaking of like the, the whole screen. cybersecurity woke stuff. Her right? up. Oh are you, yeah. Who are you talking to, John? My wife woke up the cat and she was like, Do you want the cat on stream? <laughs> oh god. Yes. <laughs> no, no, but uh, speaking of like Cybersec. the whole sci uh, stuff. I, so that's for those who don't know. That's what I do outside of the podcast. Like I'm in cybersecurity. I'm a cybersecurity analyst. I would say by day, but it's really by night. Um, Fucking cause nerd. Because I, I work. Because I work overnights. Um, and people talk like, especially Hollywood is like the scary part of it is hacking or or Trojans and, and <laughs> hacking viruses. And like, dude. yeah. <laughs> like Hollywood would have you believe. I'm in. Hollywood would have you believe like that's the scary part about cybersecurity. No. It is not. It is social engineering. My God, is that the biggest weak point of any any security system you can put? Yeah, I remember watching a uh, so um, pirate it's software. Same... Yeah, go on. So Thor on um, Twitch and YouTube, uh, pirate software. He talked. He worked in cybersecurity, and he did it for. Um, I believe he did it for Blizzard, and also for like the, the Department of Energy, the U.S. government. Mm. Uh, so Fucking he's well fed. <laughs> He's very well versed in um, security, cybersecurity, and mm-hmm. he talked about social engineering. He's like, yeah, so there's one thing that I would do, like I'd pretend to be a new hire or a potential new hire, and I'd go to the interview place, and I'd be like, I'd be, because um, it's, you know, it's a place you need a badge to get into, but then he'd drop things like, oh, hey, yeah, uh, I don't really like cooking. Are there any places that people usually go to to get food at? And it's like, that's social engineering. That's a question yep. to social, and it's <clears throat> like, you know, if I was a dude who just wanted to to steal someone's badge information or something, they would, if they told me like, oh yeah, there's a Taco Bell about five minutes away from here. Everyone likes to go there for lunch. 
I would go, he's like, I could just go there and scan their badges and then I'd have access. And I'm like, holy shit, I didn't even think about that. It's a like, lot of crazy. information, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, like it's so innocuous, it is, it's, you know? It, it's, cra it's crazy how innocuous certain information you could give out could lead to something down the road and snowball. Yeah, like into an example of the leak. social engineering is you, you see on Facebook all the time, like these posts of like, oh, if your birthday and your month, the birth year and month and date determine your name or this is the anime character you are or whatever, mm. that's social engineering. They're stealing yeah. your birthday. <laughs> Hell, um, I was <laughs> they're, they're stealing your actual information. That's all social engineering. And you're just giving it to them willi yes. willi willingly. I was actually talking to my pops about this uh, topic uh, just a couple hours ago, and he told me a story about... So he works for NOAA, right? And they do all the weather stuff for the United States. And yeah. he told me about how he basically social engineered himself, uh, himself into one of the server rooms, put a USB stick in one of the servers and uh just walked out and then later when he was writing up his report he was like by the way ask them uh uh to give me my usb uh stick back and they're like the hell are you talking about and he's like yeah you guys failed big time and i'm just like holy shit yeah I used to do uh, <clears throat> social engineering testing when i worked during the day for the company i work for now i uh <clears throat> one of the things we'd have to do is we would call clients that they, they would contract us to do it. And then we would call into one of their branches and ask, just start asking very innocuous questions. Um, and it's like stuff that you would not think twice that would be used against you or your organization that you work for. So like one of the things I would have to do is like, I would make up this fake story about, um, the company that they work for hired us to do some uh, security testing for them. And I'm trying to get a hold of uh, the head of uh, the IT department. And the, the person's name was not listed in the ticket that I had. And so I was just calling the main branch to find out if I could get, you know, transferred to that guy or at least, you know, find out the number. And then like, if they give us their name or the branch they're located at or a number to call, they fail. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You should not be giving out if you, especially if you work for some of the organizations that we tested, you should not be giving that information out to a random person that calls up. Yeah, like no matter I, what story I they give you. Another, uh, yeah. just like I think it was yesterday or the day before that, I watched a YouTube short about this lady being like, "I can show you how social engineering is super easy. How I can get access to your like um, one of your like I think it was a phone account or something. I don't mm -hmm. remember what type of account it was. Basically, she plays a uh, audio of a baby crying." And then she calls into the, like the customer service lines like, Hey, yeah, sorry. And basically, video. yeah, she social engineers this whole entire like fabrication of like, I'm the girlfriend. We just had a, a baby, you know, I'm stressed out and this and that, and basically makes the person on the other end of the line feel bad. And like, Oh, I want to do my most to try to help this poor struggling mother. And it's like, she gets added onto the account and gets access to a bunch of shit. That Holy she shit. What? Yes. And it's like, it, just, it was crazy. Yeah, that's how social yeah. engineering is. It's you can fake a lot of stuff, and people like because people don't listen to protocol, and they they feel like, oh, I just want to do the best and help people. And it's like, dude, there there are rules and regulations for a reason. Yeah, like, like, and yes, a lot you of want to have lot of, basic human empathy, but too bad people. A will lot of take social advantage. engineering plays on people's desire to want to help other people. Yeah, which sucks, but yeah. yeah. And the crazy thing is, when I did that social engineering stuff, I know I was responsible for getting people fired when they failed those tests. Yeah, like, there's a bunch of, um, so, like, I have to badge into the facility I work at, and one of the things what we're never, ever supposed to do is badge other people in, because an instance of, like, this actually did happen one time, where, um, some guy got fired and walked out midway through the day, and he came back, and he was about to, he's gonna go kill someone. Oh, shit. And Damn. Yeah, because he was dark. like, yeah, because he, he's pissed off, right? He's a disgruntled worker, and it's like he got his badge revoked, so he can't actually come in without armed security fucking killing him. So what he did was he found someone who was like outside smoking and walking back. Oh, hey, dude, I forgot my badge. Can you badge me in? And he badged them in, and he's just like, you know, that's that's not good. I believe was he wasn't blood able shed to that day. No, he wasn't able to do it because someone else noticed. Like this guy got walked off for threatening this manager, and he came back to kill the manager. 
Mm. But he couldn't find him because it's like, you know, they're busy. They're, they got other shit they're doing. So he couldn't find him. And he didn't actually kill him. But since someone else noticed, like, hey, this dude's back. He's not supposed to be here. They grabbed his ass. Like, you need to get the fuck out of here right now. Like, your ass about to spend time in federal prison for this shit. Mm. So they, they de- de-escalated and got the guy, like, out of there. But it's just like. That's good. That's the type of shit that happens. Like, you're not supposed to do that for a reason because things yeah. like yeah. that can happen. We have the exact same rule at the post office. <laughs> don't have a badge. You can't let the people in. If they don't have any identifying information, uh-uh. Yeah. Get a supervisor. What's even crazier is, like, this is someone who worked there literally up until four hours ago. So to most people's knowledge, this guy was not let go. Yep. Yeah, I'm so sure. they think that, they're that, just helping out time, their buddy, you know? That time, the knowledge probably hadn't spread to, like, the entire facility. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm it's just, like the, the, that type of stuff is very important. Because yeah, you the don't, you don't know the side of cyber the consequences. So scary. Yeah, the consequences of like trying to be a nice person. Uh, like, what, what's that old saying? The pathway to hell is uh, littered in. Paved with uh, oh, good, paved intentions. good intentions. Yeah. 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 The road to hell is paved with good intentions. Yeah. And, and it's true. I mean, so many like leaks and hacks that I see, hacks and quotation marks that I've seen recently, it's all due to social engineering. All of it. Yeah. I know there's that one thing that's been going around, I, I, I guess, Discord for a while now. Um, and I got sent this, too. Um, so the thing is, um, and this is all more phishing than social social engineering, but it's kind of both at the same time. Because a lot of phishing is also types of social engineering. Um, but there'll be, someone will send you a DM on Discord. And yeah, this happened be, to me like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. yeah, this happened to me about like a month and a half ago. Uh, some and it's a it's an account that you've messaged before at least once, and it'll say it, it'll be uh, and it's an account that's been compromised, but you might not know that. Um, and they'll always make sure for, from what what I've seen, they'll always make sure it's someone that hasn't DM'd you in like at least a few months. Um, but they'll say, "Hey, dude, I'm I'm so sorry to, about this, but uh, um." my account was uh, was compromised and I accidentally reported you uh, when I was reporting my own account or something like that. Yeah, it's something yeah. similar to that. Um, yeah. And it makes it's it like... sound like your account got reported and is going to get shut down. Um, yeah, unless like you do the... this XYZ like that's how thing that, actually that they have works. listed Yeah, out. come on. Like, I remember yeah. I, was playing, uh, I was playing Helldivers in the morning and uh, the guy DMs me and I'm like, this person doesn't talk to me ever. Like, we've, <laughs> we haven't talked in a while. So I'm just like... Uh, that's suspicious it's like hey sorry to bother you but something happened in the server this and that and i'm just reading and i'm like this doesn't sound like him (laughs) (laughs) this sounds like a scam and then right when he posts the link and it has my profile picture and i'm just like oh shit you got hacked (laughs) (laughs) so then i started reaching out to like mutuals like hey does he know his account got compromised and this and that and I believe it's all squared away now, so it's fine. I don't know what happened to the account, but it was so funny because I'm like, oh, fuck. I've never gotten these DMs before. That's so I scary. actually, I, I saved it here. I haven't actually, like, I, I've blocked the account, but I haven't, like, deleted any of the messages because I wanted to use this to send screenshots to show, like, other people. Um, but, yeah, the, the initial message is, like, hey there, I encountered a situation on Discord where someone with a very similar name to your profile attempted to deceive me. Instead of reporting the deceptive user, I mistakenly reported your account. I'm really sorry. It was all an accident. I didn't mean it. And then they send a um, um, a screenshot of a very official-looking Discord email that's most likely been Photoshopped. Um, and, mm. like, that's kind of how it starts. Like, trying to find the DM. The oh, like the way it starts out, I could believe that someone would accidentally report a user, like the wrong user. I can believe that could happen. But I don't think your account's gonna sh- get shut down from one single report in Discord. No, no. So mine was like, um Hello, can I have a second, please? I do have concerns. Then they <laughs> at me. And I'm just like, Yeah, what's up? Sorry to bother you. Is there someone in your family or friend who uses your Discord account? I'm like, no, just me. Why? Because I'm like, I think this. I think uh, this person got hacked. <laughs> they're like, I want to see what yeah. they're gonna do. So they, are you sure? Because I was hacked last day because of a fake Nitro link that I happened to click on in Discord. The hacker used my account to gift and buy worth almost 362 of Discord Nitro and boosters. I thought it was you because you have a similar profile picture as the guy who sent me the link to hack me. 
So I accidentally filed tickets on your accounts for doing illegal purchase scamming instead of someone else. And yeah. support responded on the ticket that your account will be suspended and your IP address will be affected too. And I'm just like, oh shit, this person got hacked, dog. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> and then they're like, I sincerely apologize. I attempted to inform them it was incorrect. Will it be okay if you do this, fill out this form? And I'm just like, I didn't respond. At this point, I reached out to Mutual. I was like, hey, yo, this person got hacked. <laughs> Which is the smart thing to do. Yeah. Well, because I'm, I'm very savvy to, like, people trying to send me fucking uh, Absolutely. But, like, uh, the one, one of the, the ways... One that I got, well, the one that I got sent, like, it, it had... It, it looked like someone actually sending a, a message on a social media app. Like, there's very little punctuation. The spacing is not... Like, they're, like everything's on a separate line. So I, I heard that the reason the phishing websites and scammers and stuff like that, the reason they send it with poor grammar, even though they have the ability to not um, to make it like look official, mm -hmm. is because they only want the people who would fall for it to fall who for it. Who are stupid be, enough to not check oh. the grammar. Because they'd be the easiest to scam. That's In why a they roundabout target way, a lot that's of actually people. really clever. It's yeah, like it's the original, the, the, the 419, the Nigerian Prince scam from back in the day. It yeah. had intentionally bad grammar and really stupid, like, mistakes in English that no one sending an, an official or, like, genuine email would send because they didn't want smart people clicking on it. They wanted dumb people clicking on it that they could manipulate. Yeah, it makes sense. That's dark. That's Clever, why the people, the people who do, like, the gift card scams, they target old people who don't know any better. Yeah, because if I accidentally overpaid for my Norton antivirus, I'm I have to pay him back in five hundred dollars worth of gift cards, <laughs> worth of like Olive Garden gift cards or some oh, shit. Stupid. I don't know if you guys uh, have heard about this, but um, you guys know about cartels and all that. Oh, well, yes. so yeah, they don't do just drugs. They have uh, diversified a. It, in oh, a yes. lot of things, just uh, just to have multiple streams of income, obviously. One of the ways they've done it is phone call scams and such. And I heard a story on NPR the other day about this guy who's lost over half a mil oh, to the cartels. God. Like to multiple Literally scams or all just their one scam? Uh, no, one scam over a timeshare. Oh. Oh. oh, I was gonna say if he's been scammed yeah, like yeah. eighty times, like I mean, at that no, point you're it's too a stupid single, to not be scammed. Single long term scam, mm -hmm. and it's over a, a timeshare that they had over half a mil, and uh, everyone uh, like now that everyone's hip to it, it's still too late because it's the fucking cartels. He's not seeing a fucking penny of that back. Literally, his and his wife's uh, whole life savings gone. To I'm be just fair, like, Holy I think shit. that timeshares are all scams in general. Like, not even official timeshares are actually scams, but I mean, they are. But like, this was oh, this was so much worse. <clears throat> I'm just like, on one hand, this is my s sympathy because this this is it wasn't just anyone either. This was an <laughs> actual law, a former law enforcement person, like a sheriff. <laughs> you committed this random crime. Please pay the FBI and iTunes gift cards to go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, we live in interesting times. <laughs> Scary we live times. In a freaking hellscape, man, full of technology that scares us and is out to just bleed us dry and kill us. Like, what the heck? And, and people running nations that are old as fuck. Oh, it's just. It's whatever. But you know what? I'm going camping this weekend and I'm going to get away from technology and it's going to be great. It's great. I love camping. I know you I don't. I love camping. No, you Dude, don't. So I wanted to wrap this up by talking about camping just a little bit. Okay. I think bear shit in camping... woods. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you about the time a, a bear actually shit in the woods. Uh, <laughs> not... No, I run into bear shit all the time when I'm tracking and stuff. It's just like, yeah. oh, there's, there's a bear here. Watch out. Don't get killed. Oh, I thought you meant a bear shitting in the woods because I've done that too. <laughs> no, not being <laughs> naked and shitting in the woods. No, going. So I was watching uh, A Sign of Affection from last season. And mm. they did, like, a day trip to go camping next to a river. And I'm just like, you know, it made me think. Camping in anime and manga always looks so fun. And then I think about camping in real life. And I'm just like, man, camping in real life kind of fucking sucks. Right? 
Because <laughs> the thing is, when you, you know, in like, in most media, right, it's not in, in exclusive to anime and manga and stuff like that, but in most media, it, you only see the highlights of the good, right? Like in yeah. Friends, for example, they're always, yeah. you only, you don't see them do the boring stuff about them, like going to job, sitting in traffic and any of that stupid stuff. You only see them hanging out at the bar or the coffee shop and hanging out in their apartment, the good times, right? They don't show the boring stuff on purpose. The cool shit. Cool kids. Or the so, stressful yeah. job stuff. Camping in anime and manga is the same way. They don't show you that you have to trek pretty far to go get a decent camp spot. Like, at least for where I live, if I wanted to get to a nice camp spot that's not overrun with people, I have to travel, like, two hours plus. Damn. I can go to campsites that are, like, within an hour of me, but they're going to be packed full of people from the city who also want to go camping. And it's not like out in the woods. Like you go out in the woods, like you see, you you see camping in anime and manga, and it's like they go to somewhere. It's secluded. There's not another soul in sight, and it's just beautiful, and it's like perfect, right? It's like and right, the only other all, person in sight is gonna be for plot relevance. Yeah, and it's like all right. Well, first of all, good luck finding anything like that within earshot, right? Within within thirty minutes of driving, you're not gonna find it. At least if you do, it's gonna be overrun with bunch of people right same thing mm -hmm. for popular hiking trails you know on a nice day you go to one of the closer popular uh hiking trails rattlesnake you go there it'll be packed to the gills it'll be like walking in fucking line formation going to the top of the first peak because everyone's out there to go hike today and it's like oh god now i gotta deal with other people around being assholes playing fucking loud music and like i don't want to listen to their shitty ass soundcloud rapper music it's just, <laughs> it's just garbage this is very specific john and I sometimes people are just not and it's like I'm here to enjoy nature and I want to be by myself but I can't be because there's other people mm. like it's just me and my 45 and the bears like I, that's all I want to be in the woods right now <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's like you don't see the travel time you don't see everywhere you go in anime and manga there's not anyone else other than you which is great you don't see it's not like that the, the latrine uh yep. <laughs> you don't see the fact that you have to set up camp. It doesn't just automatically set itself up. You actually, you have to trek and bring all that shit with you. You have and to prep gear all the gets stuff. real heavy. Yeah, you got to prep all the shit beforehand, all your food and stuff, unless you plan to catch it out there. And, you know, maybe if you want to play fucking Survivor Man, I guess, you just don't bring food. But it's just like all the shitty things about camping is all the labor that goes into actual camping to make it actual fun. And it's like, it mm -hmm. sucks because there's also the breakdown. You know, once you're done camping, you got to clean up your shit. You know, you want to pack out more than you packed in because you're not an asshole. You don't litter. All right. <laughs> the fact that if you wanted to go take a leak, you got to take a shit. You got to go dig a hole in the ground. <laughs> right. Like it sucks. It Everything about camping actually fucking sucks. But the good parts are only so good because of the lows. You know what I'm saying? Like that's part of why I like camping, even though I hate camping in real life because I'm like, oh, God, I got to I got go travel three hours, go this way. I got to go fucking get gas. I got to go set up and do all this shit. I got to set this shit. It's an entire experience. Yeah. Yeah. But the point is to like, at least for me, I want to be secluded in the woods. I want to go out like with just friends and be able to just, you know, drink and have fun and just spend time just relaxing away from everything. Ask John about his favorite gift from his wife for camping that he threw away. <laughs> Let me tell you about how much I hate half tools. So <laughs> two half in tool. one, so two in one tools, three in one tools are fucking garbage. My wife, in her infinite wisdom, decided that you know what? He goes camping a lot. He would love this poop shovel. It's got a little <laughs> built-in. It's a it's a foldable <laughs> poop shovel that you can fold and extend and dig and shit. And I looked at it and said, Wow, this is absolute fucking garbage. I hate this. And then I went and explained for 45 minutes. <laughs> why the poop <laughs> shovel fucking sucks let me tell you why these type of tools these multi-tools suck ass all right they the fact that there's three tools in one means that it's now doing a third of its fucking job of one fucking tool okay mm -hmm. you've got a tool that's a third of effective of anything like it's it was a foldable storable storage tool like that had a knife on the edge so you can use it to cut brush and shit and I'm just like, look at this hinge. It's so flimsy. If I put this into the ground and I hit a rock, this thing is snapping in half immediately <laughs> because of that, because of the hinge system to make it more compact. Okay. Yeah. On top of that, the actual shovel itself, how it was angled and the grip that you had on the thing, this was as effect. It would be more effective to use a garden trowel to dig me a fucking hole in the ground because at least <laughs> that's fixed, a fixed fucking handle. It had better ergonomics. Than this stupid folding poop shovel. It is so bad. 
<laughs> I like how John's just shitting all over his wife right now. It's great. No, I'm not shitting on my wife. I love my wife. I'm glad that she thought of me, but holy shit, does she not know how much I hate half tools? I hate multi tools so much. Hey, it, John, would it, you say that that poop shovel was a shitty gift? <laughs> it was quite a shitty gift. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. Like, oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a shitty joke, but it's a shitty gift. <laughs> I. Just think that if you want to get a shovel, get an actual shovel. If you want to get a knife, get an actual fucking knife. Don't get these three-in-one tools. They don't work. They never work. They are, at best, they're passable. And Wait, that's John, the worst part. So I could get a basic... Quick. What's up? How do you feel about Swiss Army knives, then? Um, I've never thought that they were useful for anything. Other than okay. the corks... Or the, other than the bottle opener section of it. <laughs> Because <laughs> who brings a bottle opener with them into the woods hey, just for the there's bottle? There's nothing wrong with having a bottle opener on you any time of the day. No, so I think the Swiss Army knives uh, as a utility knife for opening beer cans, for cutting small string, and for like a, a small screwdriver, like for a quick thing, that's fine. It's not mm. optimal. The problem is, what I mean is, if I needed to screw in a hundred screws to build something, do you think using an actual molded to your hand screwdriver that has ergonomic grip with a full fucking four inch tang on it mm. don't you think that would be better than screwing a hundred screws in with a fucking swiss army knife yes yes yeah. it would be a swiss army knife the convenience of the utility is that you use it for the small things for small applications at a small scale yeah right I only need to cut a piece of line, a fishing line, just like snip. Like, okay, yeah, I don't have to bring scissors because I can bring this. You know, I don't have to bring a uh, wine opener because this has a wine opener. Is it good? It, am I going to bring a Swiss Army knife to open 100 bottles of fucking wine in the woods? No. Fuck no. no. <laughs> but if someone brought some wine and we needed to open it, this could work, right? And that's what, that's really the point. The problem with the poop shovel is that it's a very specific task <laughs> where I need to I'm dig done. into the ground to I'm like <laughs> no no you don't understand no I'm done as I gotta go <laughs> I can't do I can't do anyway that is my story about shitting in the woods a bear shit in the woods a bear anyway shit I'm in going the camping and, and I, I think John. it's a perfect time to wrap up right here I think yeah, I think it is a great hours. time since since, since Chinoda it ha does have to go I think this is a great great time to wrap up um so. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by to watch us tonight uh, do this WDF. W, blah, 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 w Use your F words. <laughs> words. Fucking vowels and consonants that work. Um, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below if you like what you saw and want to see more. Also, check down below where you can find links to all the stuff Anime Club After Dark does. Um, and also you can join our discord server where you can ask us questions that appear on our WTF as well down there. We also have a merch store where you can buy a merch that really helps us out when you do that. But with that, I have been your host, Alex, and I will see you next time. Say goodnight guys. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you for joining us. All right. This is really good. If you haven't seen it, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> oh my God. End stream. End stream. <laughs> good night, everybody. <laughs>